I now see that we have a quorum of town council members present, and I call the first meeting of the town council to order at 8 p.m. Okay. Um, Amherst Media, are you ready? Yes, thank you. Okay. <laughs> Welcome all. This meeting is being broadcast live and being recorded by Amherst Media. Copies of the, of the agenda are in the back of the room. This is a special moment as we cast off from the shore and launch our new Amherst Town Council, replacing Amherst's venerable town meeting led by its capable select board. I am grateful that the trip will not be so perilous as that of the Puritans and pioneers who first settled Massachusetts, my ancestors among them. We are lucky to have in place a seasoned town manager and a dedicated crew of professional staff who keep the town running despite changing tides as this town council charts its course as the town of Amherst's new legislative body. I would like to recognize all of the professional staff for their hard work and expertise. I would also like to welcome all former town meeting members, concerned citizens, campaign volunteers, and council members' families who are here on this special occasion. Our first order of business is council comments. This is an opportunity for each councillor to say a few words if you so choose. It is not required, of course. I ask that you keep your remarks to under three minutes each or two minutes each. Do you want to stand when you're ready to speak or shall I call the roll? Call the roll, okay. Um, Mandy Jo Haneke, at large. I'm going to pass and not make any comments tonight. Okay. Andrew J. Steinberg at large. Thank you. Um, it's an honor to serve as a member of the town council with 12 other members who took the oath of office yesterday. Individually, we have a variety of experience, skills, and knowledge. Together, we have a lot to offer to each other and to the town as we together guide our government and make important decisions on behalf of the people we serve. We were elected at the conclusion of a campaign that allowed us to convey our vision for Amherst to our community and to hear about their priorities, hopes, and fears. I am confident that we share the, our commitment to our town and to the people who honored us by entrusting the 13 of us to serve as this council. At times, the campaign, unfortunately, was difficult. Assumptions were made about candidates, and there were misunderstandings, mischaracterizations, and hurt feelings. All 26 candidates in the November election were invited to a unity breakfast following the election, and most attended. I look forward to that spirit of unity remaining with us. There will be agree our agreements and votes that will not be unanimous. We need to commit ourselves to respecting each other afterwards as we, as, and a promise that I make to all of you. Thank you. Alyssa V. Brewer, at large. Thank you, I'm gonna jump right in. We need to take our time, though, because other communities do things the way they've always been done. The previous Town Government Act was also a framework, just like our new charter, and much of what you saw happening day to day was not written down anywhere, but based on continuously improving best practices. Our appointed town manager is now the sole chief executive officer, an unprecedented level of power in the history of the city known as the town of Amherst. We don't know the best way, the Amherst way, to do a town council town manager form of government. I ran for this position because I've been in town-wide elected office for 16 years, and I know a lot about how we've actually done things in the past 20 years, and I fully expect you to listen to me when I describe those things, <laughs> especially if I do it concisely. So, I also fully expect to listen carefully to all of you as you each bring forward your experiences, your hopes, and plans of how we can do better. Everything we've done in town government up until now is actually, believe it or not, for a thoroughly considered reason. But I hope you will challenge those reasons. 
Amherst's legislative body has never been subject to open meeting law or conflict of interest laws before. There are many things we're going to do as a legislative body that have never been done in Amherst before. And each time we do them, we set a tone as well as a precedent for future action. So I ask that as we undertake every action, we ask ourselves, are we doing this because we can or because we should? Are we acting from a position of power or from a position of leadership? Our upcoming election for president and vice president is going to be awkward because transparent democracy is awkward. There were always quite a few town meeting members who didn't want their votes recorded. There have always been elected officials who didn't want meetings televised. And there have always been those who want to just dive into a discussion sparked by a single public comment at the beginning of an evening, despite the larger community, meaning the vast majority of residents who will never attend a town council meeting, having no anticipation of such a discussion. I don't believe the charter empowers the president of the town council to treat the vice president as part of an executive team. I do not believe the two of them should participate in every agenda setting as a duo, but rather what the charter states, that the president should prepare the agenda with advice from all members of the town council. No matter how much we personally admire the skills of two individuals, excluding 11 of 13 is not a good way to start. We're going to be continuously building and rebuilding coalitions with a variety of people around different issues, including people who disagree with both the means and the ends, and that's just at this table, in addition to our work with all our constituents. We can govern ourselves in a way that's more accountable to all members of our community, and I look forward to this journey with all of you. Thank you. Um, Kathy Shane, District 1. Hi, good evening. I am honored to be here and thrilled to be here, having knocked on as many doors as I could find people behind in District 1. I also had the pleasure of meeting and listening, and I want to keep what I heard from voices where people were identifying issues of concern to them, long-term and short-term, at the forefront of what the council is considering. I also made a commitment, and we've been working in District 1 to keep this commitment alive, of trying to bring issues out early for discussion before decisions are made. And we're hoping with the formation of a neighborhood association, both at large council members as well as district council and others can come out and hear discussion early on before we have to make a decision at the council. So as I said at the outset, I'm honored to be here, and I agree with Alyssa. We are at a very new beginning, and I hope we pave the way for a solid foundation for the future. Thank you. Thank you. And Sarah Schwartz, um, District 1. I'm going to not use the microphone correctly the first time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I am going to echo the sentiments of other people here saying that I'm very honored to be here and that I was chosen by Precinct 1 to represent them. I am determined that I will be able to keep in touch with my constituents and to bring their voice forward here. And I very much look forward to all of the diversity of ideas that shall also be presented to me here. Thank you. Uh, Lynn Graysmer, District, no, I've got this wrong here. District, District two. 2. I'm yep. going to pass at the moment. Patricia C. DeAngelis. Where? Um, oh. oh, I have to hold it? No. <laughs> Hi. I come tonight filled with gratitude um, for everyone who helped me get here. And, you know, I could list countless people, and some of them are here, but I also really want to thank the town uh, staff in every way from, from the town manager to the maintenance people, people who have been giving and supporting us in many, many ways. Um, I really want everyone to know that I still need your help. Um, and please, please continue to challenge me with your concerns and your ideas. We'll hear a lot tonight about unity. And I know that everyone has one goal, to create a vibrant, diverse, just and sustainable Amherst. But each of us may mean something very different by those words. 
I think it will be through our exploring our different meanings with productive, respectful, and honest dialogue, not only with each other, but also with all of the people of Amherst, that we will achieve the best results for our town. We won't all agree. Let our unity be one of collaborative exploration and respectful consolidation. To do this, we need our voices. We need your voices. And um, we need all voices to create meanings that carry us beyond one single idea or image of who we are or who we might become. I look forward to working with my colleagues on the council and all of the people of Amherst. Thank you. Thank you. And now, um, Dorothy Pam from District 3. Uh, first, let me thank my family, friends, neighbors, and dedicated volunteers for supporting my candidacy for town council. Not only will I do my best to represent the interests of our district and the council, but I will work hard with the other councilors for the greater good of the whole town. I am dedicated to staying true to the roots of New England's gift to the nation of direct citizen democracy, the town meeting. As we move into our new council form of government, we must continue to let the voice of the people be heard so that the residents of Amherst keep the sense of ownership and responsibility that are the hallmarks of the New England town meeting. The sense that the town is more than the sum of all of its parts, that individual gain often chooses to take a back seat to the greater good. We must preserve our visible history, the physical aspects of the town, the simple pure lines of its neighborhoods, its woods, fields, and shared natural spaces that represent the transcendental spiritual and democratic aspirations of its residents. Amherst's proud history is one of love of learning, literature, farming, and wisdom, both practical and otherwise. Its spirit of independence in a communal setting is coupled with self-sufficiency and sustainability. We must build on that foundation. Amherst should not become just another town somewhere in the US, but retain its unique character. After all, our own town poetess, Emily Dickinson, is exemplar of idiosyncratic poetry. This is not a time to stifle independent voices, nor to follow the winner-take-all partisanship that we now see in our nation's capital, but to continue to be a representative, participatory, and balanced government as reflected in its elected officers. The people want deeds, not just words, right action and justice, not just fine speeches. So I'm hoping today that we will see a true reaching of hands across the aisle and a fusion government. This would be in the best interests of our home. Okay. And now, George Ryan, District 3. I'd like to uh, begin by actually making a request to all of you here this evening and those watching at home. Give us a little time. <laughs> Give us a bit of room to breathe and help us get our feet under us. I was going to say, let us get our feet wet, but I was thinking of Dorothy's metaphor. I think I will leave that aside. <laughs> this is largely uncharted territory. What we're undertaking is something new, at least for Amherst. Give us a chance to get our act together before you judge us, either individually or collectively, before you attach labels to us, either individually or collectively. Let us get a chance to know each other a bit. Let us figure out how we can organize ourselves to do our work. Let us figure out how we're going to manage our business. I've had an opportunity to speak to every one of my colleagues over the last few weeks, in some cases for the very first time. These conversations have been cordial and they've been frank. And one thing I can personally attest to is that every one of the people sitting in front of you this evening cares deeply about this town and wants to do the best for it. So I'm asking you, please, cut us a little slack, <laughs> especially in these first few weeks and months as we work together to get our act together. Originally, originally I was going to say the first three years, but I, I mean. <laughs> And trust the process, as imperfect as I'm sure it will be, the time for criticism will come, as it must and it should, soon enough. But for the moment, give us a chance. Thank you. Uh, Evan Ross, District 4. 
So earlier today, uh, this afternoon, I was in Boston at a 100% uh, renewable energy millennial leadership summit. Uh, I think I got all those words right. Um, with municipal leaders and elected officials from across the Commonwealth. And, and at one point uh, in a group with many of them, including uh, state representatives and, and city planners from all over, uh, they looked at me and, and my compatriot, John Page, who was also there and said, uh, what is Amherst doing? And I said, okay, well, <laughs> give me a moment. Um, and I talked to them about our, our resolution towards 100% renewable energy. I talked to them about our net zero energy buildings bylaw. Uh, and they were uh, enthusiastic and excited about it. And, and it, it showed that uh, they were realizing what I think everyone at this table and in this room has realized, which is that uh, Amherst can be and often is a leader on issues um, and a leader in putting its uh, ideals into action. Uh, but then as they asked more pressing questions about, uh, well, how are these buildings going to work? We realized, well, we haven't built them yet. We don't know. <laughs> uh, and I think that really highlighted that we've done a lot already. We, we've made a name for ourselves as leaders, but there's a lot more work to do. Uh, there's a lot to do to realize some of these ideals and to realize these intentions. Uh, and that is what we're here to do o over the next several months, years, uh, and, and as long as we serve, uh, is to continue the tradition of leadership in Amherst and to continue to ensure uh, that those ideals that we hold uh, take place, that we see them actualized. And I am honored to, to be able to take part of that process and to serve alongside uh, the other 12 people at this table uh, to start to make some of those changes and to see uh, some of those visions actualized. Thank you. Stephen D. Schreiber, District 4. Thank you. I first wanted to thank the citizens of Amherst for really selecting such an interesting first town council. So it's been amazing to get to know 12 people over the last, um, since the election, through various team building efforts that I really didn't know before. So I am, I'm super excited about this unknown journey that we're going on with 12 new teammates and our player manager, Paul Bockelman, and his amazing staff. So I wanted to give a particular shout out. So my gateway to town government was through the planning board. So what's bittersweet is that yesterday I was my last day on the planning board. Today is my first day on town council. But I really wanted to give a shout out to the amazing planning staff and planning board members that I've served with for almost 10 years, some of whom are here. Chris Brestrup, our planning director, and I can't see others. But So I'm really looking forward to this, this journey ahead. Thank you. Um, Shalini Belmill, District 5. So, thank you. So thank you all for being here, and thank you for those of you watching at home for taking the time to be with us here in this, this very first town council meeting. I'm so honored to have your trust as district councilor for uh, District 5. and. I promise to do my best to represent each one of you, even those who are not in this room or watching. Um, I hope to find ways to, to reach out and meet with you and continue to meet with you. So I did meet many people during the campaign and knocked on many doors and heard from many of you the issues we are encountering in our district and in Amherst at large. And since then, I've had the chance to uh, meet with all our district councilors here. And one thing I feel very confident today, after having met and spoken with each one of you, is that we are going to do good work here. We bring in different perspectives, overlapping perspectives. We bring in uh, different skill sets, experiences. And I think all of that is going to be really good to to solve the problems, to really um, utilize the opportunities we have in this town. So I'm really excited um, to work with our first town council to create the processes and procedures to create an inclusive government 
that really engages and invites and creates opportunities for everyone to participate in some way, to have their voices heard. And I look forward to working with Darcy uh, in our District 5 to find ways and maybe even learn from uh, our other uh, district councilors how they are reaching out and creating uh, neighborhood communities and uh, networks so we can continue to have this engagement with all of you to continue learning and listening and working with all of you to create the government we want, to create a thriving community for every person in Amherst. So thank you. Thank you. And Darcy A. Dumont, District 5, is our last council speaker. Thank you. Uh, I'm also very honored to be here as a new town councilor today uh, and want to thank all of my supporters, many of whom are here. Um, I, the day after the election, I, I realized that it seemed like everyone who had been elected um, supports the idea of a sustainable Amherst. Um, uh, and I'm really happy to hear Evan, that Evan has uh, attended his forum in, in Boston and is making progress there. Uh, both the most recent report of the UN International uh, Panel on Climate Change and the recent National Climate Change Assessment, as you all know, made dire predictions about climate impacts happening much sooner than had been expected. Um, and on behalf of our children and posterity, bold action moving us toward a clean energy economy is really essential. And um, there's much we can do on a town level. I'm very excited to be able also to be, uh, to witness the building of our, whatever is going to be our first new zero energy building. Um, and looking forward to the creation of a new energy and sustainability committee, which could help establish climate action goals and benchmarks and provide an entry ramp for our sustainability initiatives. Um, one of the most important goals of this council really is to heal the town. Uh, and I'm optimistic that we can do that. Uh, we've been very divided uh, and many here today are still hurting and distrustful of the new council. I believe that one indication of whether we can heal the town will be how we choose our leadership today. We can show unity and bipartisanship by choosing someone from each camp for the president and vice president positions. That would convey to the public that we're united, we'll be able to work together, and that members are able to vote independently. It would instill trust and confidence in the new council. Uh, the president would still be able to work with any member of the council she chooses to. And if we don't do that, if we choose two slate candidates, distrust and division is likely to continue. Let's instead, as counselors, do everything we can today and from here on in to heal the town. Thank you. <clears throat> our next item on the agenda is public comment. This is our time for us to listen to you and for you to speak directly to the town council. Our town charter requires a public comment period at every public meeting. There will also be a public comment period toward the end of this meeting, if you prefer to save your comments for later. May I see a show of hands of people who would like to be recognized to speak? Okay. Um, good. Um, I see about, I think, three or four hands. I will recognize each of you, and I will ask you to keep your remarks to no more than three minutes. Um, would, you, you do need to ask him to come sit. At the oh, desk. you have to come and sit at the mic at the, the desk there. Um, I guess, Andra, you are the first hand up. I like the new digs. To push. Okay. I said I like the new digs. So um, thank you to all of our new counselors. It's a very exciting moment. And um, I commend you and um, thank you very much for running and serving for all of us. Um, I'm Andra Rose, District 3. Um, I'm a straddler on issues in Amherst. I um, 
have, um, I voted for the schools, I voted for the charter, and I spoke to both sides about the rancor and the character um, attacks. And um, I also voted for candidates who were on the Amherst Forward slate and candidates who weren't. Um, and it's very important to me that everyone in town be represented well. Um, I spoke to many of you yesterday at the reception after our wonderful ceremony and um, about the importance of your choice of leadership today um, in order to show your determination to work together as a team um, and not in factions. And I, I feel like this is really going to be able to happen um, and that everyone wants their independent voice to be recognized. Um, several of you said that you didn't know um, exactly what the vice president role would be. Um, and I encourage you to think in terms of what it should be. <laughs> um, you're the boss now. And um, if you're not sure, then you should probably talk about it together before you vote. Um, because if it's going to influence how you vote, then you know, figure it out. It's Alyssa and many others said. The, the rules are, are to be figured out and, and not in a rush. Um, so um, those of you who shaped the charter and served on the select board are going to be great resources. Thank you for running. Um, but you must know that you're seen as uh, the powers that be. And so it would be much better if we had fresh faces um, in the leadership. So thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> um, and our next speaker, please stand up and come to the table and state your name. We're having a little technical difficulty up here. <laughs> I'm usually pretty fast. Um, I'm hoping to bring the button down. Push things down. Oh, and then a little okay. light will go on. Okay. okay. Uh, Kitty Axelson Berry from District 2. Um, I, want to re I want to agree with what Andra, said, Andra Rose said and with what Darcy said about the importance of having um, um, people getting along, unity, but also recognizing that there is a pack in town. Um, there was a slate, there was a signed position, you know, a position statement that people signed, some people signed, other people stayed independent. And um, I want. I think it's really important for the town's divisiveness um, to be overcome by having both independent people and, and PAC people being able to speak. Um, the president prepares the council meeting agendas with advice from members and the manager, presides at all council meetings, regulates its proceedings, decides all questions of order, appoints and oversees all members of all council committees, um, has full voting rights, and performs ceremonial functions. The vice president presides in the absence of the president. So the president is a very, very important role, and, the vice pr and presumably the president won't always be at every single meeting. So the vice president is also a very important role. So I do hope that it is not only um, um, filled by people endorsed by Amherst Forward, but also by independents. I also want to add the importance of having minutes um, accurate and put forth to the public in a timely manner. That's all. Okay. Thank you very much. And our next public speaker, come up please. And is the little light on? Okay, and please give us your name. Hi. Oh, hold it. Okay. Um, my name is Julian. I'm not a voter yet, but I will be in a few years. <laughs> um, I'm just wondering, is there a possible clarification of who 
it, or is it all of you who are running for president and vice president? Um, that will be determined when we have nominations in a few minutes. Okay. Okay. And then we will find out because I don't think anyone really, really knows completely right now. You're welcome. <laughs> Do we have another speaker? Yes, please, come on up. Uh, hi, I'm Nancy Baer. Uh, I live in North Amherst and have for 24 years and have never been involved in town government. Uh, and uh, this uh, charter council and change uh, caused me to decide that I should. Uh, and so I am part of the planning group for the um, uh, District 1 uh, Neighborhood Association. Uh, and I've been um, excited by it, but also a little heartsick at some of the divisions that I've seen. And um, I, I just didn't think that, that that would be Amherst somehow, uh, my hometown. Uh, so I'm really hoping that that can uh, fade away and that uh, something more of a higher road can take its place. And I plan to do my best, you know, to uh, keep things uh, objective and fair and affirmative. Thanks for your work. Thank you, Thank you very much. And I see another hand. Hi, I'm Jeff Blaustein from District 2. Um, I just want to paraphrase something that uh, Justice Roberts recently said in response to a divisive comment by the President, which is that all Supreme Court justices are, um, they're, not, they're not Obama Supreme Court justices, they're not Bush Supreme Court justices. I want to get past this, some of you, people, people's belief that some of you are beholden to a pack and some of you are, quote, independent. You're each elected by this town, not by a PAC, and I think you all know that. I don't think everybody in the audience knows that. I just want us to, this town to move on beyond thinking of PACs and independents. That's not who you are anymore, and I know you all know that. Thank you. Thank you. Do I have anybody else from the uh, public? Okay, then um, we will move on. Um, the next item on our agenda is the election of officers. The charter calls for the town council to elect a president and a vice president, each for a term of one year. I would like to explain the process that we will follow. I will ask for nominations. Nominations do not need to be seconded. Counselors are allowed to nominate themselves. After each nomination, I will ask the counselor nominated if he or she accepts the nomination to which they can answer yes or no. When I determine that there are no other nominations, I will close nominations. I will then ask each counselor uh, who is nominated if they would like to make a brief statement on their nomination. And I would ask that you keep these remarks to no more than three minutes. At the conclusion of these statements, I will ask the town clerk to call the roll of the council. When the town clerk calls your name, please state the name of the person you would like to serve as president of the town council or state that you choose not to vote. The clerk will call the roll of the entire town council. At the conclusion of the roll call vote, the town clerk will announce the results. If one counselor has received a majority of votes, then that person will then have been deemed elected and will serve as president. If no one reaches the majority threshold, I will repeat the process again, beginning with requesting nominations for serving as president of the town council. We will repeat this process until we elect a president. Once the president is elected, that person will take over chairing this meeting and I will go sit in their seat. Are there any questions? Okay. Are the counselors ready to begin this process? Okay. Good. I will now open the floor for nominations to be president of the Amherst Town Council for one year term. Yes. I nominate Lynn Griesemer for president. Okay. Um, I hear the nomination of Lynn Griesemer to be president of the town council. Um, Councillor Griesemer, do you accept this nomination? I do, yes. <clears throat> Are there other nominations to be president of the Amherst Town Council for a one-year term? Okay. 
Seeing that there are no other nominations, I will declare that nominations are closed. Okay, so I invite each of the nominees to make a brief statement. Oh, I invite the nominee to make a brief statement on her candidacy to be president. Let me begin by saying it's an honor to be nominated um, for this historic moment in our town. There has been much talk about the future, and I keep reminding myself that rarely are any of us given a chance for such a fresh start. It's a strange feeling in many ways and very scary, uh, but also exhilarating. When I decided to run, for town council, which seems like years ago, um, I was very curious about who my fellow pioneers would be. The group that emerged was to me fascinating and wonderful. Some I have known for years and others I have never met until after or during the election. After months of campaigning, 13 of us have now seen quite a bit of each other. Not as much as we need to, but quite a bit. And to me, it is still wonderful. We've gotten to know it, or we're starting to get to know each other much better. But we're, but here, but there, here as we officially start, I want to mention one thing that really struck me. In my observation, you see before you 13 very, very independent people all committed to moving Amherst forward. That was the line that came to me at 12.30 last night <laughs> when I woke up and never got back to sleep. So um, I use those terms intentionally because during the campaign, it was sometimes suggested that these two ideas, independent thinking and Amherst forward progress were somehow in opposition and reflected sides in a struggle. But I don't see the inevitability of that struggle. Now, I'm a realist, very much of a realist. I've been involved in a lot of political campaigns over the years. Somebody has to win and somebody has to lose. And then temptation to go tribal can therefore be very strong and universal. But campaigns are occasional punctuation marks in a much longer story of governing. I don't think any of us would like our governing at any level to be constrained to a narrow box that campaigns can put us in. For me, our aspirations should be bigger. We should try to get out of the box as fast as we can, and I know we can. Like many of you, I have been and remain deeply agitated by what passes for governing at the national level. It seems as if tribalism and manufactured divisions are all that matter. Our highest elected official is still trapped and tries to trap us with him in a box that should be closed more than two years ago. He wants to vanquish his op opponent again and again. He can't see the future because he is blinded by the past. It's maddening and it is terrible for our country. But what, but what can we do about it? Well, one thing we can do is model good behavior. We may be part-time leaders in a small community in the place most people don't think about, but we are part of the answer to what democracy means. We can choose to burden our governing with notions of tribes and sides from campaigns past or we can take advantage of our fresh start and celebrate the idea that we are 13 independent thinkers whose ideas and alliances will surely shift and evolve as together we try to move Amherst forward. That is what, what I am willing to work for, and I hope that all of you will join me in that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> it is now time to vote. 
I'll remind you that you will be voting for the person by name you would like to have serve as president of the town council for a term of one year. Are the councilors ready to vote? Okay. Seeing so, I'll ask the town clerk to call the roll. The town clerk will call the roll alphabetically, and each member shall name the person that he or she would like to see serve as president. Ms. Balmill. Lynn Griesmer. Ms. Brewer. Lynn Griesmer. Ms. DeAngelis. Lynn Griesmer. Ms. Dumont. Lynn Griesmer. Ms. Griesmer. <laughs> I was told to vote for myself back in elementary school. <clears throat> Ms. Haneke. Lynn Griesmer. Ms. Pam. I choose not to vote as presiding president of this election. Mr. Ross. Lynn Griesmer. Mr. Ryan. Lynn Griesmer. Ms. Schoen. Lynn Griesmer. Mr. Schreiber. Lynn Griesmer. Mr. Steinberg. Lynn Griesmer. Ms. Schwartz. Lynn Griesmer. Having achieved a total of 12 votes, uh, Councillor Griesmer has achieved a majority vote from the Town Council to serve as President of the Amherst Town Council for a one-year term. Griesmer. Uh, Councillor Griesmer, please come to the center of the council table. Uh, would you please point, is that right here? Okay. And have the town clerk square you in as president. Now, um, I'm going to hand over the gavel and change seats with council, with president of the town, Amherst Town Council, Lynn Griesmer. Thank you, Ms. Pam. in the works, aging beautiful wood. This is a temporary symbol of office. You may. So as promised yesterday at our transition events, I'm presenting to you the gavel from the moderator and Amherst wow. Town Meeting as a legislative body. This is the appropriate gavel for now. So congratulations and thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. First of all, let me start by thanking Dorothy for her terrific job as President Pro Tem. She has now convened us at three different times, mm -hmm. led us through two training sessions, and opened this meeting tonight with all of the same fear and intrepidation I feel, <laughs> I'm sure. And I want to just appreciate her putting herself forward as our senior member. She relieved me of being that and a couple others. Um, and you've done a marvelous job. Thank you so much, Dorothy. Thank you. 
We have other things we'd like to do, but we do need to proceed to the election of a vice president. And before we do that, let me just go back to something that is a point I was trying to make in my remarks, and that is there are 13 people in this council. Each of us needs to carry our weight, and I know we can and I know we will. And so vice president is an important position. Occasionally my husband and I do take vacation, mm -hmm. and um, I don't necessarily even want to call in, frankly. Uh, I might like to, you know, look at the ocean and enjoy some time off. Um, so in the absence of a president, in fact, the vice president does need to be able to conduct meetings and manage the agenda, et cetera. At the same time, there's also many, many talents on this council. I've stopped even trying to count the degrees that people have, law degrees, doctorates, expertise in architecture, you name it. And if we don't have it, those of you in the audience, and those of you listening, and those of you not able to listen tonight do have it. This is a town of many, many talents, and no one has a right to take that away from us. So I would like to proceed and ask for nominations for vice president. We will follow the same procedure that um, the president pro tem did follow. And so we will start with nominations. I nominate Sarah Schwartz, and I want to point out that one of her many attributes is if we look at the symbol of Amherst up on the wall, we could have a book and a plow leading us with Sarah's long experience with farms. Thank you. Okay. Yes, Evan. I would like to nominate Mandy Jo Haneke. Uh, in this moment, as we approach our first town council, I think we need someone who can comfortably and confidently and competently take over should Lynn uh, be on unavailable on vacation. Right. <laughs> uh, so we need someone who can step in at a moment's notice uh, to take over the running of meetings. Uh, Mandy Jo has shown this through her work on the Charter Commission. Uh, she is adept at process. She has a focus on inclusiveness of all voices, and she has demonstrated uh, her understanding of the movements and deliberations of a body. Uh, and these are the skills that we need in a vice president, uh, should she need to fill in for the president if the president is unavailable. Um, and I believe that that is the most important criteria we should be using to evaluate the vice presidency, is their organiza organizational skills and their ability to take over the role of the president and their understanding of process. And so I enthusiastically nominate Mandy Jo Haneke for that role. So let me pause for a moment and ask Councillor Schwartz, are you willing to be nominated? Yes. And let me ask Councillor Haneke, are you willing to be nominated? Yes. Okay. So I think it would be appropriate if each of you would like to say something, no more than three minutes. Yes. Um, you still need to keep nominations open. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Um, Patience, please. Patience. Are there any other nominations? Then I move that nominations be closed. And am I doing this right? Okay, thanks. I'm looking at our town council right up here. And the people sitting behind him um, who also know these rules. Um, uh, so shall we start, first of all, alphabetically? Mandy Jo? So I am honored to be nominated to be the vice president. Um, I, if elected, I would hope to serve you well. As my nominator indicated, I am ready to and able to step in and chair meetings whenever possible. Many of you know of my service on the Charter Commission as vice chair where I was able to do that, but many of you may not know that I spent three years as president of the Pioneer Valley Symphony where I chaired meetings for an entire three years. I ran the board meetings. I was able to navigate those board meetings through very tough and intense discussions on a ver very wide variety of sensitive matters with a fairness and grace and in a way that ensured all the viewpoints that were being dealt with and all the personnel that were being dealt with were heard in a meaningful manner. I would, if had to chair, would operate in the same sense if I 
had to take over as president, I guided the organization through the creation of a new performing group, a youth orchestra. And I also, just this past year, chaired the music director search committee. So I have chaired many meetings. I am completely capable of doing that and comfortable doing that. Um, and in that music director search committee, I ensured that both the committee members and the musicians had a large role in choosing their new music director. As vice chair, I worked to keep the commission on time through its 18 month schedule. Um, I would aim as vice president to work with anyone and to be an ally to make sure their voices were heard on agendas, um, get things on an agenda, do any of that necessary. Um, I also served with Meg Gage and Julia Rushmeyer on a working group and with members of the community to put together a plan for community engagement and then executed it. I would operate in the same way as vice, vice president if I am elected. So I would hope that my nomination and hopefully gain your support because per the charter, the one thing that is set forth is running meetings in the absence of the president. And I am well experienced in that, but I am also experienced in bringing people together in collaboration and making effectively collaborating with others, keeping things on schedule, putting an emphasis on community participation, and working hard to make sure all viewpoints on a committee are heard and valued. So thank you. Councilor Schwartz. I too am honored to be nominated for vice president. Um, I believe that I see all of us here as a team. I think that's a message that I've carried throughout my entire candidacy is that I like diversity of opinion. I don't really see sides. And I, like, I think it's very healthy to hear different opinions because it gives you something else to think about. And then maybe you end up in the middle somewhere where you never thought you would be. Um, I am going to talk to you a lot about reliability. <laughs> and because of that, something came to my attention this evening when I was talking about what I believed um, Vice President would um, bring to the council, is that some of um, the counselors had had a concern about a misconception about my reliability. So I would, as a matter of housekeeping, just like to bring this up just to clear the air. Um, so there is a, I'm gonna call it a rumor, that I quit finance committee. Uh, I'd like to clear that up. I had been appointed to finance committee for a year being asked to finish someone else's term. At the end of that year, I was asked if I would serve finance committee in a term that was my own. At that time, an unexpected family emergency arose. My son was fighting for his life. I chose to pass up the opportunity to serve on finance committee in order to care for my son. I informed the town manager of my decision, um, leaving plenty of time to fill the position. I am not a quitter. I make decisions best. I make decisions based on the best for an overall outcome. So now, why I feel that I am qualified for this position? Um, I've lived in Amherst for 28 years. I served for many, many terms on town meeting. I served uh, several terms on the Agricultural Commission, and I was vice chair. Um, but the only qualification I believe that I need for vice president is that of reliability. For I believe that the charter calls for the vice president to only stand in for the president if the president is absent. The president has 12 equal capable counselors to help her with whatever she asks for. A vice president that is anything more than someone who stands in for the president when she is absent creates an imbalance of power, robs other counselors of learning experiences, and creates the impression that the vice president role is a place where the new president is prepared. I don't I don't think that's how the charter reads. Um, so I'm, I'm committed to just staying firm on that and taking the space to only fill in for the president when the president is absent. Um, and I thank the person who nominated me. Thank you. Okay. It's 
It's now time to vote. I'll remind you that you will be voting for a person by name. You would have to serve, you would like to ser have serve as vice president of the town council for a term of one year. Steve. Just a point of order. Um, would you want to see if there's any discussion? So. Oh, sure. Is there further discussion? Yes, Dorsey. I'm sorry, Councillor Dumont. Uh, I would just like to um, repeat the point that the charter uh, states pretty clearly that the, in one sentence, the role of the vice president um, is just to take the place of the president when absent. And I'm, I'm, a, I'm a little concerned about the fact that the council hasn't had a full discussion of what the role of the vice president is. Mm -hmm. um, and so we've heard various um, ideas about what the role could be, mm -hmm. ranging from what Sarah described to um, a much more, in, much more involvement in working with the president, um, much more involvement with setting agendas, with um, planning, helping with appointments, committee appointments, and so on. So I'm interested in knowing, maybe from the president, um, mm -hmm. what, what your view is on the role of the vice president. Mm -hmm. Let me address a couple of points you've made. Uh, first and foremost, the charter is very clear. The vice president acts when, in place of the president whenever the president is not able to be at the meetings. Um, in, in actually talking about committees, uh, it is not my intention to have one person be consulting on that, but actually consult with all of you about who you, you feel would be good people to be on various committees, yourselves and other people you know in the town. So I don't see the vice president as being kind of in charge of or the other voice on setting committees. Um, it, it really depends on who a vice president is and who, a, who other people are as to what kind of other roles they might take. Um, various people have, like yourself, uh, legal background. So when it comes to an issue where maybe it would be useful to have somebody look at something with the kind of experience you bring, and we are going to have an example of that a little later tonight, um, I would hope that whoever is vice president and whoever on the council besides the vice president would serve in those kinds of capacities. So I don't see it as a special position per se but as somebody who in fact does have the capability of stepping up when the president is not there. Does that answer your questions to the best of my ability at this point? I have to hold it down, okay. Um, I would um, strongly urge that um, we think not only of reality, and we, but we also think of perception, we think of what symbol we are presenting the town in terms of how this town is going to work together. And so I suggest that it would be a very good idea to um, support a vice president, according to the charter, someone who would back up the president and not think of it as a super mm -hmm. um, ruling team of two. Um, I can see that as being a very uh, attractive uh, thing, but I think that we're, we're very aware that we want power sharing, and that means we want all of the counselors to feel wanted and needed and a very important part of this process. So I would uh, vote for the vice president to be someone who uh, is not part of a special leadership team, but is just there to back up the president. Other comments from the counselors? Yes, Andy. Yes, the only other analogy that I can come to is I've thought about this and I've looked at our charter is um, 
back to where we've been in several points of discussion this evening, and that's our federal government. Um, we have Vice President of the United States, which has a very limited description in the Constitution, essentially to be there in case the President dies or there's a tie in the Senate. There isn't any other role other than what the President um, delegates to the Vice President. Right. And I think that as we've looked at it over the course of our experience, and as those of us who've uh, read history, what's been in the past. And it's varied tremendously, and it depends upon the president and the vice president. I think going forward, um, starting today, and for as long as this town is operating under this charter, as it's currently worded, it's going to be uh, up to the president and the vice president at each juncture as to exactly what that role may be. And um, therefore, uh, I very much appreciate uh, Councillor DeMond having asked the question mm -hmm. and um, our president having responded to it about her perception of the role. Councillor Schreiber. So is it too late to change the charter? But <laughs> <laughs> um, I, think it's a good, I think what others have said is absolutely critical that we not read any more into this position than what's exactly stated in the charter, which is that the vice president steps in only when the president is not available, that the vice president not, that this not be an executive team, that this not be a president in training. I think all 12 other people here are, can and should be equally trained to be the possible next president. So if we want to sort of revisit an ad hoc um, executive whatever task force of a smaller group of us that are sort of a leadership team, uh, then we should do that. But right now I think that it's critical that we read it at absolute face value. The vice president, as you mentioned, in the United States does have this extra authority in the Senate. And we don't haven't given that authority in this particular case. Yes. Councillor Ryan. As I understand it, um, I'm being asked to choose not about a symbol, but about a person. I'm being asked to choose between two very fine candidates, um, not between two symbols. I don't know how to judge between symbols, but I think I have some idea of how to judge, as difficult as it is, between two candidates. And so um, that's the basis upon which I will make my independent decision. Uh, on the basis of what I perceive to be the qualifications of two candidates. Um. Other comments? Yes, Councillor DeAngelis. Um, I feel strongly that we need someone who um, is not an expert, um, but someone who is willing uh, to learn and is expert in, the air, in other areas in terms of the town of Amherst. I feel strongly that um, there's a sense that for some people that being vice president gives an extra cachet to what they do. And I think that's not true. I think that what we need is someone who's solid and reliable and present with the president. Additional comments? Councilor Jamal. Um, the only, uh, the charter says that the only qualification needed to be an officer is to have been elected to the town council. Other comments? Are you ready to vote? Okay. Um, seeing so, I will ask the town clerk to call the roll. The town clerk will call the roll alphabetically, but starting with the second person down on the alphabet. And each member shall name the person they would like to serve as vice president. After that, the town clerk will announce the results of the voting stating, Councilor whoever has received a majority vote for the town council to serve as vice president for the Amherst Town Council. 
Councillor Balmill. I'm sorry, Councillor Brewer. I cast my vote for Sarah Schwartz. Councillor DeAngelis. I cast my vote for Sarah Schwartz. Councillor Dumont. Sarah Schwartz. Councillor Griesmer. I'm abstaining. Councillor Haneke. I'm going to cast it for myself, Mandy Jo Haneke. Councillor Pam. Councillor Ross. Mandy Jo Haneke. Councillor Ryan. Mandy Jo Haneke. Councillor Shane. Sarah Schwartz. Councillor Schreiber. Mandy Jo Haneke. Councillor Steinberg. Mandy Jo Haneke. Councillor Schwartz. Myself, Sarah Schwartz. <laughs> You didn't do ball. Councillor Balmill. Uh, Mandy Jo Haneke. Six to six. Okay, I have a vote. I have a tie vote six to six. With one abstention. Further comments? Can we, can we have two vice presidents? Um, yes. It's just a thought. Um, there are 13 counselors. One is president, 12 or not. They're 12 months in the year. Um, <laughs> uh, I actually am, am somewhat serious, but at least a thought to think about. Um, but uh, it would require each of us, once a month at least, to very seriously pay attention um, to the business of the council and be prepared to step in if we were called upon. Um, it's an idea I mentioned to a few people before, including my wife. Um, Anyway, it's just a thought. Am I correct, Councilor Brewer, that this is something that the Select Board has done? Yes. So yes, the Select Board has been doing this for several years. Um, it will be harder, easier to keep track of 12 rotating people than it was to keep track of four rotating people. Um, mm -hmm. So in some ways, perhaps easier. It is an interesting proposition that I had kind of dismissed as being the old way of doing things. But where I do see some benefit to it is just as we've talked about leadership development amongst all of us, rather than it being a pair of people who are at least perceived to be controlling the agenda, even if that was not their intention to be perceived as. Mm -hmm. So I'm uh, interested. Um, may I confer with town council? No, I'm sorry, with the town counselor, attorney, town attorney, town attorney. After conferring with town, the town attorney, excuse me, the town attorney, uh, the charter is very explicit that the vice president is a term of one year and cannot be distributed uh, on a rotating 12 month, one month basis. Um, so that option is no longer an option. Um, the, that leaves us with two options. Um, one is further discussion, another one is a round of voting. And uh, so is there any further discussion from the council? Andy? So I did think, I did think about one other alternative, and uh, there's been no discussion to get to agree uh, about this for, um, but what it is is that it does provide in the charter that the council can reorganize at any time. So while it's a one-year term, the ability to reorganize does exist, and 
we would have the option of deciding to have a person serve for six months with sort of an understanding amongst ourselves, though it would take a majority at the end of six months to agree to vote to reorganize, to reorganize and choose the other person. We cannot, I don't think, set that up in any other way at this time. We cannot make the vote that it would switch at the end of six months. Councillor Schreiber. So we're in this for a three-year run. So we have the luxury of being... Um, if the green light's on? Okay, maybe I have to actually talk into it. <laughs> I thought if the green light was on, I... Um, <laughs> So we're in this for three years. So we have a luxury of that no other council will have that will be together for three years. And those years are gonna go by quickly. So, you know, maybe reorganizing after six months makes sense, but maybe we're gonna, we know that we have to reorganize three times. So, we're, we, we, so we have a rotation already set up of, right. of three times. Councilor DeAngelis. Is it possible for us um, council, attorney, yeah. <laughs> um, to reorganize now, to make a decision to reorganize. Uh, Madam Chair, I'm Joel Bard, town attorney. And I'm afraid I didn't quite understand the question. Yeah. Well, uh, we have the right as a council to reorganize, um, and I was wondering. And you know, my co my esteemed colleague was talking about reorganizing in six months or a year. So I'm wondering what would keep us from reorganizing, making a decision to reorganize now. To reorganize right now. Yep. So if I understand correctly, so far you've elected the president mm -hmm. only. Maybe the shortest term of any president. No, 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 no. Trump's should have been short, but so the, sorry. The um, charter says only, as I recall, I'd be happy to take a quick look, but it simply says that the council has the right to vote to reorganize. So the answer to your question would be, any time a majority of the council votes to reorganize, it can reorganize. So what, we've had several possibilities here. Um, is it all right if I keep talking? Please, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering if uh, we had this six month idea, what if we have two really qualified people, um, both of whom I respect, why cannot we not reorganize and either have them alternate months or each do a turn of, okay, but hang on, <laughs> or each do a turn of six months in this first year so that we have one vice president who serves for six months and then uh, with the guarantee that the other person would be then vice president. Madam President, please. So, first, let me read the, the sentence on reorganization. It says simply, the town council may reorganize at any time at its discretion. So, uh, in my opinion, the one option available to the council now, well, let me say this. Uh, it's my opinion that the council could not now, if you will, set out a schedule for when different people may be vice chair. So, uh, in my opinion, the alternative available is that the council have a discussion and perhaps vote to commit to reorganize. So it wouldn't be a binding vote, but it would be a commitment to, let's say, in six months to reorganize the position of vice chair, for example. That would be consistent with the charter. Thank you. Yes. Councillor Pam. Okay, pushing the button. The uh, script for the election of the president said that if we did not achieve a majority, then we would start the process again, starting with new nominations mm -hmm. and a vote until we got a president. We could then follow that same procedure 
for vice president, which means we would right. then start the election for vice president over right. with new nominations. So if we come up with no other course of action, I recommend we do that. Okay. Other comments? Yes. Um, I uh, think that we didn't really resolve the issue of the role of the vice president. And one option would be to table the vice president vote until we have had time for the council to have a discussion of what the role should be or whether, whether the council can formulate the role of the vice president or whether that's completely the, up to the president. Councilor Brewer. Following up on that, um, perhaps this is another question for the town attorney because having discussed this with a number of people over the course of the campaign, I feel, as you obviously all heard very strongly about the role that is here, I have had other people say, and it's been said here tonight, that the president gets to decide the role of the vice president, and I see no reason why that would be true. And so mm -hmm. I do not like that idea, and that idea has been told to me that it's up to the president to decide that, and I disagree. And so I don't know how we come to a conclusion around that, whether it's whether, as Ms. Dumont says, we have a longer discussion that it's up to the council to decide by majority what the clearer role of the vice president is, or if the president just believes that they have that choice. Other comments on this issue? Should we try another vote? Okay. Are there any other nominations? And the two people that have been nominated, Councillor Schwartz, yes. Councillor Haneke, yes. yes. Okay. We have another roll call vote. This time we're starting the third person down, right? Councillor DeAngelis. Uh, I have, uh, vote for Sarah Schwartz. Sarah Schwartz. Councillor Dumont. Sarah Schwartz. Councillor Griesmer. Abstain. Councillor Haneke. For myself, Mandy Jo Haneke. Councillor Pam. Sarah Schwartz. Councillor Ross. Mandy Jo Haneke. Councillor Ryan. Mandy Jo Haneke. Councillor Shane. Sarah Schwartz. Councillor Schreiber. Mandy Jo Haneke. Councillor Steinberg. Mandy Jo Haneke. Councillor Schwartz. Myself, Sarah Schwartz. Councillor Balmill. Mandy Jo Haneke. Councillor Brewer. Sarah Schwartz. The vote is, is six to six with one abstention. Okay. Councillor Schreiber. Uh, do we have to make this decision tonight? Can we table this to another night? No. Oh. Um, I just, uh, this afternoon, I spent some more time with Robert's Rules online, and I went to uh, the question of can a president vote uh, during an election when they're presiding. And what I read, and this is online, of course, um, was that generally the president, if it's a, a, a secret ballot, a paper ballot, the president can vote because no one will see what their vote is. If it's a roll call vote, the president would most likely not vote unless their voting would change things. In which case, Robert's rule suggests that the president should not abstain in such a case and should vote. I was following your lead. <laughs> you abstained. <laughs> yes. Oh, true, true. Yes, 
Evan. This, this council has a lot to do over the next three years and a whole lot to do over the next month. Um, and I would be incredibly hesitant to table this discussion. Right. I would rather we set leadership tonight and we can move on to discussing the issues that matter to the people who elected us. If I may, um, I'm sorry, but I do believe this matters to the people who elected us and I would not want anyone to assume that we don't believe that. I think that while we have many things we need to be working on tonight, I think we have a fundamental disagreement about the role of the vice president. I don't think it's just about a symbol. I don't think it's just about a person. I think we have a fundamental disagreement about the role of the vice president. If you believe that it's up to the president to decide what the vice president does, you're voting based on that. If you believe it's the role that it says in the charter, you're voting that. I just don't know how we resolve this. Mm -hmm. um, is, a motion, is a motion in order? Yes. I move we table the vote for the vice president so that we can have time to discuss the role of the vice president. The motion's been made. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay. Motion's been made in second. Discussion. I think it's very clear in the charter. It says, and a vice president who will serve a term of one year. Period. So I don't think it's a question of clarifying what the role of the vice president is. I think it's that some people feel that a proposal put forward, but not necessarily publicly, that the president and the vice president work together as an executive team is a position that some people agree with and some do not. And I don't think a committee is going to resolve that issue. So I think we should look at our consciences, and I think that we should vote once again. There is a motion and seconded on the table. Are there other comments? Councilor Schoen. Okay, I've been quiet on this. Uh, I think the proposal that we have a discussion is an important one. Um, and I, I think that's what we were going to be asked to be vote for because we could say, and I think what Alyssa has been warning us, that a role that is just stepping in when someone is absent will leave the other 12 people in an agenda setting role, whether it's rotating or not, as soon if there is a possibility that there's a vision that it's more of a partnership, it creates two people that are more likely to be agenda setting in a differential way that we're not an equal group of 13. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's a discussion whether we can reach an agreement that we want to limit the role or we're willing it to be broader would be put up to vote and then whomever is elected to be vice president would have to honor that. I don't know whether we can do that, you know, so that's, I don't know whether we can make that kind of dis decision, but I think that's what the discussion is about. Because either person could clearly say I'm willing to play that role or this role um, if we said we're going to make it more limited. Okay. Other comments? Yes. Councilor Schell. Baum. So um, I think a question we can ask ourselves is, is that discussion going to change our voting in any way? And is the discussion on the role of the vice president going to change our vote? Because everyone is here and waiting, and is that a discussion we need to have you know, in, the, in the next meeting, and we can clarify that? And, and the second decision is voting, and how do we resolve the voting of the vice president? The two different things. Are there any other comments?
So there's a motion on the floor. It's been seconded that we table this till next council meeting and have an opportunity to discuss that, the role of the vice president. That's the motion that's on the floor. No further discussion. Call the question. All those in favor, raise your hand. Are we raising our hand, raising raising our hand, your hand to table? If you support the motion that we will, in fact, not elect a vice president tonight, but we'll go back and just have a conversation about what the vice president does. Okay. There's three, four. All those opposed? Nine opposed. Okay. Um, so we're back to voting again. Okay. Sarah, yes. Yes. Okay. Um, Mandio. Yes. Okay. All right. We're this time. We're starting with the fourth name down. Councillor Dumont. Sarah Schwartz. Councillor Griesmer. Abstain. Abstain. Councillor Haneke. Mandy Jo Haneke. Councillor Pam. Sarah Schwartz. Councillor Ross. Mandy Jo Haneke. Councillor Ryan. Mandy Jo Haneke. Councillor Shane. Sarah Schwartz. Councillor Shriver. Mandy Jo Haneke. Councillor Steinberg. Mandy Jo Haneke. Councillor Schwartz. Myself, Sarah Schwartz. Councillor Baumilne. Mandy Jo Haneke. Councillor Brewer. Sarah Schwartz. Councillor DeAngelis. Sarah Schwartz. Sarah Schwartz. Six to six. Yes, Councillor DeAngelis. Um, symbols are important. Um, they represent, symbols are important. They represent um, ideas and ideals. And I feel strongly that we need to um, move forward on this issue and move forward in a way that allows what has been perceived by town members and people in this room as sides and have a representative from each side so we can begin to build some kind of bridge across those sides. Because it's a waste of energy and it's a waste of time to be fighting that battle in that way. So I think it is a time for a symbolic movement right now. Councilor Dalman. I think it is important to have this discussion, of course. And when we talk about symbols, we also need to remember that different groups had different symbols involved and there were different things that were symbolic. And so how do we choose which group's symbols need to be more respected? And maybe it's time to move forward beyond what was dividing us at that point. And the people have voted for us, and we've met, and we've spoken to each other, and we've connected. We're working on issues across the board. There are people, you know, we are, we've already started those discussions. And maybe this is a time to, for us to step in as a town council behind the people, individuals, and not the symbols. Because again, the symbols are they're different. Different things have different meanings for the different groups. So I really invite us to look at maybe a, a maybe the discussion could be of um, who who is the who are the candidates who are going to bridge and and bring us together who are going to support the president in bridging this divide and. From what I can see that has happened, Mandy Joe did get the most number of votes 
in the town of Amherst uh, at large. And uh, she does have the mandate of people across the board. Uh, she's a single person who has the most number of votes, and that's why I am. But I'm happy to have a, you know, more of an exploration or discussion here around that. What can, can we think in a newer way as a town council to break through that idea of symbols that small groups of people have had in this town? Other comments? Yes. Councilor Ross. Thank you. Uh, with all due respect to Councilor DeAngelis, uh, my opinion on this matter is that this is not a moment to take a symbolic vote. This is a leadership position. This is a role outlined in the charter as someone who, should the president be unable to fulfill her duties, as she's expressed, will happen when she needs to be on the beach on occasion. <laughs> uh, we need someone who is able to run the meetings. And I think tonight has shown that those meetings will not always run smoothly, that they will not always run as expected, that it is going to be messy. And I think we need someone who we have uh, confidence in navigating that messiness, navigating that process. And so uh, I do not think that this is time for a gesture or time for symbolism. I think this is time for us to vote for the person who we think is most qualified and competent uh, to fill in for the president. I have faith that both candidates could do the job. Um, my personal belief is that Mandy Jo Haneke brings uh, a, a great deal of experience in running committees, in organizational work, and that should be the biggest criteria, not a symbol uh, or not an endorsement or non-endorsement that occurred during the election. So I would urge my fellow counselors to make a decision based on qualifications and not based on a symbolic gesture alone. Councilor Schoen. Hi, I, when I nominated Sarah, I didn't speak strongly enough about why I think she is qualified for this position. Um, I mainly looked at the plow up on the wall. But uh, I've gotten to know Sarah as we've been campaigning and watching her work with people, work with groups, and be able to cross over to all sides and listen closely. She has a long experience in our town participating in town meeting, participating on the Agricultural Commission, some experience on the Finance Committee. So she's bringing in to us some of our past when we're looking forward. That's why I think she can and will be able to step in if in the absence of Lynn, we need someone to chair and listen. She, I also know she doesn't, because we've had long discussions about this, she's not looking this as a career move onward to presidency. She really wants it to be the person who steps in and then moves backwards uh, to her regular counselor role rather than setting agendas. So I think we should recognize that it's not just symbolic. We are talking about the role that the person wants to play and what their future aspirations are a year from now, two years from now. Other comments from the council? Yes, Andy. This has actually been very difficult, almost torturous for me. Um, I've known Sarah for a long, long time, and she was on, served on the Finance Committee with me. I have a lot of confidence in her. I have a lot of confidence in Mandy Jo because I've worked with her through kind of a, a role that I played in trying to be in, um, helpful to the Charter Commission and in many other um, things that we've done together in town. And so I've had an opportunity to observe both. Um, in the end, um, we couldn't come to um, any kind of agreement, I don't think, on what the role of the vice president is going to be because the charter says what the charter says. And it is what I said before, it's going to flow. And I think that the intent in, in not being specific in certain things in the charter is so that this council and future councils 
can interpret things and reinterpret things to make them work as they will best. So um, it, it would not be advisable for us to set out a um, detailed, committed description for what the role of the vice president is because I don't know that we want to even try to make that kind of commitment um, for future councils, future presidents, future vice presidents. In the end, I had to make my difficult choice, and I did it based um, upon an assessment of where I felt having known two p wonderful people for a long time, having observed them and the work that they do, and um, it was tough, but I did make that decision, and that's why. I'm sorry. Yes, Councillor DeAngelis. Many of us, of the 13 of us, have uh, facilitation experience. We've run organizations. We've done all of that. Um, and so there are many people here of the 13 that could take on the role of vice president. The reason I support Sarah is the quality of her clear thinking, her ability to articulate issues, and her ability to not take sides but deeply listen to the people that she's involved with. Um, and I have learned from her. I have um, been supported by her. And I think she would make a wonderful vice president. Additional comments? Call for another round of voting. Mandy Jo? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Sarah? Yes. A little more enthusiasm. I would like to just say that that was a very confident and assured yes. Okay. Um, all right. Councillor Griesmer. I'm abstaining. Councillor Haneke. Mandy Jo Haneke. Councillor Pam. Sarah Swar. Councillor Ross. Mandy Jo Haneke. Councillor Ryan. Mandy Jo Haneke. Councillor Shane. Sarah Schwartz. Councillor Schreiber. Mandy Jo Haneke. Councillor Steinberg. Mandy Jo Haneke. Councillor Swartz. Sarah Swartz. Councillor Baumill. Mandy Jo Haneke. Councillor Brewer. Sarah Swartz. Councillor DeAngelis. Sarah Swartz. Councillor Dumont. Sarah Swartz. The vote is six to six with one abstention. Um, we could open the nominations again and see if we get some new different nominations. Okay. We have a motion to open nominations again. Is there a second? Okay. So we have nominations uh, again. We'll start with nominations for vice president. Yes. Are both Sarah and I already considered nominated, or are they back to a blank slate? They should be re-nominated, yes. Yes. Thank you. The floor is open for nominations. Councillor Ross. I nominate Mandy Jo Henneke for the Office of Vice President. Okay. I nominate Sarah Schwartz. For Vice President. Okay. Are there additional nominations? This is getting us nowhere. Excuse me, I shouldn't have said that. Are 
Are there additional nominations? <laughs> Councillor Haneke, yes. Okay. Okay. She, oh, you don't even need to second, but that's okay. <laughs> All right, we have three people who have been nominated. Uh, Mandy, excuse me, Councillor Haneke, do you accept the nomination? Yes. Councillor Brewer, do you accept the nomination? Yes. Councillor Schwartz, do you accept the nomination? Yes. Are there any other nominations? Can I have, ask a point of clarification? Does it have to be um, a majority vote? Yes, it does. Okay. All right. Roll call. Um, Closing so, nominations? Are there additional nominations? Yes. I'm sorry, I thought perhaps we were at the point of statements. Oh, I'm sorry. excuse me, yes. I wasn't clear on if they no, were close. We certainly should. Uh, would you like to start, Councilor Brewer? <laughs> Thank you. I'm not trying to prolong this. I think every, I, I like to think I've been clear in my concerns. I have a problem with the president deciding if the vice president is at every agenda setting meeting or not. It's really that simple. If we're leave, we leave it, we have opinions here that clearly it should be up to the president. There are other opinions that it should not. We could keep having discussions all day, but even if the majority of people said, president shouldn't get to decide, I'm not really sure the president's compelled to follow that majority opinion. So we are in an incredibly awkward position mm -hmm. um, where no one is going to be happy. And were I to serve as vice president, I can guarantee you I'm not going to agenda setting meetings, but that was not really what I would like to look at this role as being. I wish we could have done this another way. And I will be not in the least offended if I don't get a single vote. I am very frustrated that we can't seem to come to a decision when it seems as though we could come to a decision that said the role of the vice president is limited. It is not up to the president to change it. If we wish to discuss it further at a future date, what additional duties they might take on, like breaking ties in the Senate, that would be fine. But it, since we have not yet come to that conclusion, I don't see how I can change my vote from Ms. Swartz. Okay. Councillor Haneke. Well, this is awkward. Um, so, <laughs> no, I, I already stated what my qualifications were. I don't have much to add to that in terms of the fact that in the charter it does say the vice president will assume the duties of the president shall the president not be able to serve. And I believe I have those qualifications tremendously for that, having run meetings in very sensitive and instances um, as president of the Pioneer Valley Symphony. I've run meetings as the vice chair and all of that. Um, I appreciate Sarah and <laughs> Councillor Swartz and even Councillor Brewer for stepping up. You know, it's, it's a very tough decision. Um, I, I would serve as vice president how this council wants a vice president to serve. Um, that's what's in the charter and, and anything else the council seeks. Councilor Schwartz. So I would like to make it very clear that one of the things that I'm offering to the council is that of one of that the vice president is only to take on responsibilities if the president is at the beach or at a romantic dinner or whatever, <laughs> she's absent. Um, I feel that I'm not just a symbol 
when I was asked to run, I had to really think for myself, if I'm running for this, my feeling of ethics is that I would be able to stand up and say, yes, I am qualified. I believe that I can do this job well, that I can serve the town well, and that even though someone who was also running has some pretty big chops, did I feel like I could stand up and say, also, I think I can stand with, with that particular person? So I had to think about that in my heart, and my answer was yes. The other thing that someone posed to me is, are you willing to lose? And you know what? I said I'm probably one of the best people in, in that role because I'm not going to be, I wouldn't be angry at the council if they decided that someone else had more merit than I did. We're a team. We're going to work as a team. I don't want anyone to see me like it's just a symbol. I want people to vote for me for my merit. And if I did not win, I, I very much respect Councilor Henneke, and I, I, that's where I'm at. So yes, voting for merit, and I think that's where we're at. Is there anything else? Anybody? Any other nominations? Any other statements? Then we'll take a vote. Well, I, was, no. I wanted to, say, I wanted to, to, to add a comment. Yes. Okay. I'm sorry. Um, I'm just going to say that I think that Sarah would make a great addition uh, as the vice president. And she brings, uh, representing a very important sector of Amherst. She's a farmer. She's a businesswoman. Uh, she's on a farm which has been in, uh, I guess, uh, your family or your husband's family for a hundred years? Hus okay, so it's kind of like she's really the roots of Amherst. I find her a very open, honest, um, convincing and sincere person at all times and I think that we can have absolute trust that she would do whatever she's required to do but would not overstep. So I support Sarah Schwartz. Are there other comments? I support Sarah, um, but I also feel like um, that it's time for you, Madam President, to step out of the role of neutrality. I think you have very strong opinions about who you want to have in that role, and I think that you need to step up to that. Okay. Other comments? And we'll move to election. Voting. Ready? Councillor Haneke. Mandy Jo Haneke. Councillor Pam. Sarah Schwartz. Councillor Ross. Mandy Jo Haneke. Councillor Ryan. Mandy Jo Haneke. Councillor Shane. Sarah Schwartz. Councillor Schreiber. Mandy Jo Haneke. Councillor Steinberg. Mandy Jo Haneke. Councillor Swartz. Sarah Swartz. Councillor Baumill. Mandy Jo Haneke. Councillor Brewer. Sarah Swartz. Councillor DeAngelis. Sarah Swartz. Councillor Dumont. Sarah Swartz. Councillor Griesmer. I'm going to vote for Mandy Jo Haneke. Uh, Mandy Jo Haneke receives a majority of the votes of the town council. Um, oh, okay. No, we, we need to uh, congratulate uh, the vice president and have her sworn in.
We're going to make it take a 10 minute bathroom break. Uh, so we'll be reconvene at 10:15. We're going to move on to the appointment of the clerk of the council. Do I hear a nomination? Councilor Steinberg. I nominate Margaret Nardowitz to be clerk of the council. Is there a second? I second it. Thank you. Any further discussion? Yes. Oh, Councilor Brewer. Could there please be a brief explanation? I mean, I know we're all familiar with the charter and we know what the town manager has stated on a couple of separate occasions, but it's never been discussed at this body, so. Okay. Um, in the charter, I have to find my charter, there is a section that talks about what the council needs to do, and one of them is to appoint a clerk. The clerk is the person who does work with the council, make sure that their uh, minutes, et cetera, are in order and make sure that they are, does any other duties as we reasonably assign. Um, I don't think the charter says reasonable, but I, we will be reasonable. <laughs> um, so the clerk is a town employee in this case, and um, is there any further conversation about that, Councilor Brewer, that you would like? Yes. Simply that it, it seemed to me, from a conversation I had with the town manager, but again, I don't think this body has ever had. Okay. There's never been a presentation to this body that explained that, of course, Ms. Nardowitz is incredibly well qualified, and of course, we already have her, and if we can take a piece of her to do this, in addition to the full-time job that she was hired for, that would be great, whereas the charter actually does allow for the fact that we could, in fact, hire a separate clerk of the council but why would we do that, given the alternative we have? But that may not have been obvious to everyone. Okay. Further conversation on that. Would the town manager like to speak to this? No, this is strictly a council appointment. You can choose whoever you'd like to be, serve as your clerk. It's in the charter. Okay, thank you. Any further conversation on the nomination? The nomination is to have Margaret Nartowitz um, as the town, as the clerk to the council. It's been made and seconded. No further conversation. All those in favor, raise, by, raise your hand. I believe that that's unanimous. Thank you very much. And I believe you now need to be sworn in. I need to swear you in. Oh, boy. Huh? You want it, Margaret? You want it? I have to sing today. or affirm to faithfully and impartially perform all duties incumbent upon you by your appointment as the clerk of the town council for the town of Amherst. I do. The next item on the agenda is a resolution and proclamation. This is regarding past contributions of members of the town of Amherst. Uh, I will place, I will read the proclamation and ask for a second, okay? The Amherst Town Council expresses our deep gratitude to all current and past Amherst Town meeting members town moderators and members of town meeting committees, etc., to all current and past members of the Amherst Select Board and to all of town of Amherst's many committee members for their excellent and dedicated service to the town of Amherst. 
We recognize and deeply appreciate the many decades, years, and hours you've spent guiding our town through the challenges and triumphs that have brought Amherst to where we are today. And we keenly recognize the very significant responsibility that we have assumed to build on that remarkable foundation and pass on an even stronger community to the next generation. We also, that's not the one I was supposed to read. No, no sorry. Um, Yeah, let me take your copy. Thank you. Um, and thank you for your service. We hope that you and all residents will continue to participate in the many ways that are available. Do I have a second? Okay. Any further conversation? All those in favor? Raise your right hand. Aye. Oh, I'm sorry, you had conversation. I know that this was mentioned at a previously posted meeting, but just for the sake of future reference, we would normally get something like this in writing on our desks tonight. In, few, okay. in a different circumstance. Thank you. That wasn't a very special circumstance like this one is, which I would argue this is a, an isolated case. Thank you for that point of view. Is there any other comment? Okay, we motion's been made and seconded. All those in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. All right. We're, we actually have a very, couple action and discussion items. The first is the bylaw review committee report. And uh, this is according to the Amherst Home Rule Charter section, 10.7U. And under that is both adoption of rules of procedure and the repeal and replacement of existing general bylaws. We want a presentation at this point, or do we want to go to the first item? Okay, the first item is the adoption of rules of procedure. For the purpose of discussion, I'm going to place the, adoption, the rules that we have been provided as a draft in, um, I'm gonna no nominate that we accept them. Is there a second to the motion? This is for the purpose of discussion. I, I just need clarification. If we want to amend them rather than just accept them, how do we do that? You, okay. The, you, first of all, they have to be put into um, a motion has to be made and seconded before we can do anything else. Yes. Thank you, Madam President. I just want to make sure that the council members are all looking at the version that was in your yellow folder at your desk. Okay. which says revised and read on it, which has some late additions. I think that the bylaw review committee had recommended. And maybe the, the bylaw review committee could outline what those changes are. Okay. Thank you. Do you have to hold this? My name is Bob Ritchie. I'm chair of the Bylaw Review Committee. Uh, and next to me is Bernie uh, Kubiak, and uh, he's a member of the committee as well. Can you hear What's up? Speak, you have pulled the mic closer to you. All right. Okay. My name is Bob Ritchie. I'm chair of the Bylaw Review Committee. And uh, next to me is Bernie Kubiak. He's also a member of the committee, and uh, he carried the, the uh, heavy buckets of water on the procedures. Uh, we work collaboratively on the bylaws, but looking first at the rules of procedures, uh, there was a, a point uh, raised with respect to the, uh, the quantum of vote and the draft that preceded this revised uh, document indicated that the votes would be uh, a, a number of those present and voting. But when we compared what we had drafted uh, with the actual language of the charter, 
it was the uh, majority of, uh, of, the, uh, of the full council and not just the, uh, the majority of those present and voting. So there was just a technical change to conform the uh, revised uh, uh, proposed procedures to the language of the charter. And just to clarify, there are 13 of us, a majority then is always seven regardless of how many of, our, of us are present. Matters that are referred to as measures uh, require a majority of the full council. Uh, Non-measure matters and votes uh, would be merely uh, satisfied by a majority of a quorum. Okay. So a majority of a quorum could be a majority of seven persons. So a majority of, uh, of, a, of a quorum could be four. Thank but you. That would not, that would not be uh, those present. Are there questions on this specific item from the council? Um, I did not understand that last bit okay. about four. Let's try that again. If you look on, I think it's page three of the revised uh, uh, draft under voting requirements, you will see, I think it's a red line strikeout version, and you will see actions taken by the council requiring a vote on any measure shall be by a majority of councilors present. And that is the language of the charter. Uh, if it were as we had originally drafted it, it would be a majority, a simple majority of those present and voting, uh, which could be a lesser number. Uh, and that would be inconsistent with the language of the charter. So we conformed the language of the proposed rules and regular and uh, uh, procedures uh, to the language of the charter in that respect. Mm -hmm. So a quorum is seven. If seven people are present in order to pass something in this case, it would be four votes. It would be four votes. The, the charter is actually somewhat imprecise about what constitutes a measure. It seems to be very broadly defined. But it is foreseeable that some votes would be of such relatively minor consequence mm -hmm. that a, a simple majority of those present and voting will carry. Let's say it's the voting to approve the minutes. Is that a measure? Probably not. And we don't have a, a confident yardstick to hold up to the vote. Is it, is it a vote on a measure? or is it a vote on a non-measure matter? And that is where the, the, uh, the point of ambiguity arises. Okay. Are there other questions on that? Okay. Are there questions about the rules and procedures? Alyssa. Excuse me, Councilman Brewer. We should probably put that in our procedures, how we refer to each other. We will. Thank you. <laughs> Having seen a brief presentation at a previous posted workshop associated with uh, the rules that were going to be presented to us today and which we did receive a new copy of tonight, and also that we saw for largely, except for those of us who like to hang out on the town website for the first time last Thursday, and it was a fairly busy weekend, as hopefully most people attended. I realized that it would be a good idea to have rules. Town meeting had rules. And as a legislative body, we should have rules. However, I am extremely uncomfortable with the fact that the rules that have been presented to us are incredibly unclear in numerous paragraphs as to what is the opinion of best practice versus what is in the charter that is not specified throughout the entire document. There are sections that talk about not charter related. There are other sections that reference the charter, but in such a way that it implies that the charter talks about, for example, public comment not being related to an agenda, on the, an agenda item. That's not in our charter. That's a practice that's being recommended to us. There are other practices being recommended to us like abstentions, counting as no's, that's not in our charter. And so I need a much better understanding of why these rules are being presented this way versus the way some other town or other town or other town does it. 
how much of it's simply Robert's rules that's being transferred over, et cetera, because I cannot vote to accept something that it's not clear to me what the provenance of many of the issues are, and especially given that we say things like public comment during a regular meeting, not a hearing, but a regular meeting could have up to 20 people signing up at a regular meeting, which I just can't even fathom as being appropriate for a regular council meeting. So I think this needs some work before we move forward. Are there other comments? Yes. Councillor Haneke. So I like Councillor Brewer um, have some concerns about some of the stuff that has been presented. So I wonder if, you know, a number of the things that have been presented in these rules are dictated by the charter. Um, so whether or not we adopt those portions of the rules doesn't really matter at this point because the charter specifies that we have to act that way. Um, so I wonder if, and I, I think maybe better option right now given the time of night and the length of the proposed rules is that we choose a few that maybe we need to continue operating efficiently and successfully. Things like adopting Robert rules, Robert's rules as parliamentary procedure, um, maybe some portion of public comment or debate decorum or things like that that, that would help us conduct the meetings appropriately until we can maybe get a committee um, together to talk about what's been presented as a maybe and then propose a modified interim section before we have, I, I think it's two months to adopt permanent rules. 60 days, um, or is it six months? Six months. Um, six months. So, so maybe we could get some more extensive interim rules adopted before the six month deadline, permanent rules nearer the six month, but between before we can get to that interim, adopt a few that would allow us to run meetings effectively. Okay, so that's a comment at this point, not, no, a, mo not a motion, okay. Yes, Councilor uh, I wanna build on that comment um, with a, there are pieces of this, as Mandy just said, that are clearly, we would do that whether or not we had this in front of us, because the charter already says it. So picking pieces that are a real skeleton that we wouldn't have discussion about, and then us forming a committee tonight that would take up this document and have more discussion about it so that the interim document could be brought back to the full council with more information about why this is in, why this is out, what else we might want to put in that's missing. So okay. we could get interim rules we can live with, with discussion. Okay, other comment? So there is a motion on the floor, it's been made and seconded, it's to adopt the rules as they've been presented and now there's this other discussion. So if we want to do something different, I need an amendment. Thank you. I, I guess I'll move to amend that motion to adopt only the parliamentary procedure section, the um, conduct of meeting meetings on page three, preservation of order and appeals from decision of the president. Um, and public comment sections on page five. I'm gonna suggest the hearing section on page six, the debate decorum section on page six, and the spectator decorum section on page seven. Okay. For the purposes of discussion, do I have a second? Would you like to have the motion read? Margaret, can you repeat that? Thank you. I can't repeat the motion. The motion to amend was to include parliamentary procedure on page one, conduct of meetings, preservation of order and appeals from decision of the president on page three, Public comments from page five. Debate decorum on page six. 
and hearings on page six, and spectator decorum on page seven. Okay, there's been a motion made. Do I have a second? I second. Okay. We have a motion made and second that to adopt those sections of the uh, rules and procedures as identified. Before we vote, we'll have them read again. Is there conversation, discussion? Um, I would just say that if we adopt these and we find something we don't like, we of course have every right to change them so we're not committing ourselves to anything that are very heavy. Thank and it you. gives us time to look at the other issues. Right. Other conversation about this? Okay, we have a motion that's been made and seconded. The motion is to adopt portions of the rules and procedures. And again, those portions are parliamentary procedure on page one, conduct of meetings under preservation of order and appeals for decision by the president, page two, three. Um, public comment, page five. Hearings, page six. Debate decorum, page six. And Spectator Decorum, page seven. This is an amendment, yes. Councilor Brewer. Thank you, I have a couple of edits that perhaps would be willing to be entertained before I could accept this. On page six under hearings, under item three, public hearing format after petitioner's presentation, I have seen in another document that was in fact provided to us on Thursday, the recommendation that in addition for the public hearing format after petitioner's presentation, it says public speaking in favor, public speaking in opposition and questions from counselors. There's the possibility of inserting in there public asking questions because we have seen at town meeting what happens when you try and force people to say if they're voting yes or no on something when sometimes they just have a question. So that is one section I have a question about and then I also actually would like to delete the first two uh, statements under public comment on page five because so or me, alter them. So this is an amendment to the amendment. A smaller portion a smaller of the portion. hearing set. And that would be under hearings, item three, there would be a D, am I correct? Actually, I guess there would be an A that says public asking questions, just okay. before public speaking in favor, All and right. public speaking in opposite. Okay, and the other one was on? On page five, public comments. Um, if we keep one in there, the charter reference is misplaced. The statement, regardless of whether the matter was listed on the council agenda, has nothing to do with what the charter says and has certainly not been our process here locally. So I would prefer to remove that parent, that last part after where it just says within the jurisdiction of the council, we should decide what we want to do with that and maybe we just throw it out for now. The other part is in regards to the 20 persons signing up for public comment, and that's an item two. <coughs> Neither of these make sense to me. That's why I'm offering this. Okay, so this is editing um, for meaning. Uh, and that would be to remove the phrase within the jurisdiction, in, in, under public comment number one, within the jurisdiction of the council. No. I'm sorry, I made that confusing. Normally, what we do at many places, not all places, and has been recommended to us in another document we received on Thursday, as well as in Amherst practice, is that public comment has traditionally been on items, of course, within the jurisdiction of the council. I would certainly hope they would not be outside our jurisdiction but not regardless of whether the matter was listed on the council agenda, the reason being that if you encourage people to make comments on agenda items before you get to them, if you happen to have public comment prior to the agenda item, it makes, it sets a very different tone for the agenda item. So what I would prefer to do tonight is to either take out regardless of whether the matter was listed on the council agenda and assume that the president will give that instruction to people, or simply take the whole thing out. But I agree that the first part is just as Ms. Haneke indicated earlier, 
Regular meetings of the council do have to include a period of public comment because the charter says we do. That's not just a nice to do, it's required. The part about whether or not it's listed on the council agenda was an opinion that was offered to us that I do not feel comports with Amherst style of doing things. So the, this motion to amend the amendment is to remove the phrase regardless of whether the matter was listed on the council agenda. Yes, thank okay. you. And there was another one? And in item two, when it, I think it works fine until you get to the second last sentence where it says, when more than 20 persons have registered for public comment, comment time shall be limited to two minutes. And then there's just the random phrase tacked on the end, comments offered shall be in a respectful manner, which is, I suppose, perhaps feeling disrespectful at this point. But when more than 20 persons have registered for public comment, that, that's just not, that this is not a feasible process. What happens is if, just as tonight, when Ms. Pam had to recognize public comment and there were three, which kind of turned into four, which kind of turned into five people. If 20 people raised their hands, that needs to be managed on the fly. This idea of trying to set up a structure for it, I think is, is a mistake. And I also don't want to encourage 20 persons to ever come to public comment. They should be at a hearing. We should then be holding a hearing for people if that many people want to talk. So the recommendation is to strike the um, sentence that begins, where more than 20 persons have registered for public comment, comment time shall be limited to two minutes. Comments offered shall be in be a respectful manner. It, we could just cross that off too since it kind of needs okay. some wordsmithing. Okay. That's not what I'm complaining right. about. So, could I have the clerk read that back to us? Thank you. The motion to amend the amendment is to, under public comments on page five, under a public comments item one, strike the words, regardless of whether the matter was listed on the council agenda. And under item two, strike where more than 20 persons have registered for public comment. Comment time shall be limited to two minutes. Comments offered shall be a respectful manner. Okay, that motion's been made. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, any further conversation on or discussion of that amendment to the amendment? Um, I would just say I would want to keep in the conflict of interest statement on page seven. Okay, um, that's part of the original amendment. That's that's part of the original motion. It was to, which item is to keep in? Yes. It would okay. Be to just stick it back there. Yeah. Okay. Let's deal with the motion that's on the floor. The amendment of the amendment. Okay. Uh, is, yes. I believe there was another part to that um, amendment as well on page six. Yes. Under hearings, yes. item three. Add letter A to add public questions. Change A to B, public speaking in favor. Change B to C, public speaking in opposition. And change C to D, questions from counselors. Right. So this is an amendment of the amendment that the clerk has now read both parts of that. <coughs> Are there questions on that? And it was seconded, yes it was, by Councillor Haneke. Any further conversation on that? Let's call the question on the amendment to the amendment. All those in favor? I have um, 11 votes and opposed. Two, okay. Motion passes to amend the amendment. Now we're back to the original amendment which in this case was to accept only certain parts of this. And if the clerk would read those parts again. Page one, accept parliamentary procedure. Yep. Page three, accept conduct of meetings, preservation of order and appeals from decision of the president. Mm -hmm. Page five, public comments with the amendments. Page six, hearings with the amendments and debate decorum. And on page seven, 
spectator decorum. Okay, so that was the original amendment and that was seconded. Right, so I wanted to add. I wanted to add to keep in conflicts of interest. Okay, is the amendment to the amendment is to keep conflict of interest? I'll second. Okay, second. Any conversation or discussion of that? All those in favor of adding that into those sections that we will be retaining. Favor? Uh, Steve, are you? Uh, yes, okay. Uh, okay, uh, 12 to 1. T against, opposed? Opposed. 1. Thank you. I'm getting there. Um, all right. So we're back to the original. And all those in favor of adopting? Yes. Did we have a discussion? Oh, I'm, no, I'm sorry. Please go ahead and discuss if you would like. I, I just wanted to make a comment uh, that um, uh, I am going to vote for this mainly because it's going to be referred to a committee to make these rules into our own rules. Um, I feel, I have felt a little bit uncomfortable about the fact that the bylaw review committee um, gave us these rules because I feel like this is something that we can do on our own. I appreciate all the work that the bylaw review committee has done on the bylaw reviews, but I. I have felt uncomfortable about this, and also about the fact that the public didn't get um, notice until Saturday of the documents, of the rules. And so I think that, you know, we're doing this for the public, and we want to make, make sure that the public um, is able to see what we're doing and, and that there's transparency. So I just wanted to make that comment. I'm going to vote for it because we're going to make them our own. Okay, are there any other comments? Yes, Councilor Ryan. I guess I, I just wonder if this body is confident that what we've just created is sufficient for us to do our business. We have a set of rules in front of us that we are going to look at and revise. Um, this is simply provisional. We've now constructed a new document uh, ad hoc in the last uh, 10, 15 minutes, and I get the feeling that you're all confident that that new uh, set of rules uh, that we constructed out of this is sufficient for us to do our business, and uh, I don't have that confidence at all, but maybe someone can speak to that and assure me that uh, what we've just manufactured is somehow better than what we have here. Um, I understand that um, these are provisional, and I actually respect the fact that we've been given them to help us over the first few weeks. Um, now we have some new document that, or some new set of rules that we've put together, um, and I just don't have any confidence that they're sufficient for us to do our work. So if someone could speak to that, I'd appreciate it. Councilor Ross. Building off of that, I'm sure uh, Councilor Haneke put some thought into what sections to choose and what to not choose, um, but I am not clear on uh, the rationale behind that. Um, and so if she's willing, I would be interested in hearing uh, an explanation for why those six would remain and the others would be put off. Councillor Haneke, and then I also am going to ask Councillor Pam to discuss the one that you have added in. Okay, Councillor Haneke. So I'll try. Um, the authority section is taken right from the charter. So it's already been adopted by the town's residents. Um, the regular meetings, I think at some point we probably do need to adopt it, but we haven't actually talked about when our regular meetings will be. So if we adopt that, we're adopting those. So I think that one needs put off till agenda item 7C maybe, or um, that. So, so the quorum is from the charter, most of it is. Um, so the charter defines quorum. 
public notice is a state open meeting law, so we have to comply with open meeting law anyway. Um, agenda is from the charter. Minutes are from the charter. Um, let's see, what else are we at? Um, the president's powers and duties are from the charter, by and large, on, on this one. Um, the election of officers was from the charter. The committees, most of it was taken from the charter, along with the planning board, zoning board, liaisons to committees, those sections were taken from the charter. Um, committee meetings, um, in a, we don't have committees yet, so um, <laughs> that, that one didn't seem as important tonight to pass to me. Um, same with committee reports, since we don't really have committees yet. Um, conduct of meeting through the president. Um, that one's not from the charter. I, I myself wasn't sure what it truly meant. Um, the president may speak and vote. I think even though it doesn't have a charter reference, has something in the charter about that. Um, but I could be wrong. Um, the recess, again, didn't seem truly important to be running a meeting when you've already said the president conducts the meeting. Um, same with points of orders, if you've adopted Robert, Robert's rules, that's in point of order, you know, Robert's rules covers points of orders. Method of voting, um, much of that, I mean, it's not listed as part of the charter. Um, some of it actually, there is a section in the charter 265 that talks about a method of voting and how to record votes. Um, so the charter covers some of it. Voting requirements are all either taken from the charter or from Mass General Law other than um, numbers seven and eight, I believe. Um, the bylaws and other measures is pulled directly out of the charter. Um, and then there's a non-charter provisions. Um, that one again didn't seem to need adopted immediately versus maybe a committee can bring something back quickly. Um, public comment, I included. Motions, talk about Robert's rules. So an order of business and agenda, the charter talks about the president setting the agenda. So I didn't think it necessary in the rules at this point to adopt that. Um, so I didn't include that in my motion. That's why I didn't include it. Motions for reconsideration, again, there's a Robert's rules on how to do motions for reconsideration, so we could change Robert's rules at some point, but it would be covered by adopting the Robert's rules. Open meeting law is covered by Mass General Law. Remote participation is one I actually thought about including, and I, it might be worth talking about. We haven't actually adopted the remote participation agreement, though. Um, I know the town count, the select board did, so that, in theory, comes over with the charter and the transition provisions, so it has already been adopted. That means in, I believe technically, that we would already be able to conduct a, a meeting under remote participation with the policy that the select board adopted. Um, and then amendment and repeal, um, uh, to me, didn't seem necessary for tonight's meeting. And, um, Councillor Pam, you wanted to maintain conflict of interest, and that's now in the motion as it reads. Right. Um, I, I would ask Councillor Haneke uh, if there was a reason that uh, you felt it wasn't necessary to include that now. Uh, uh, it's part of Mass General Law, so that's why I pulled it out. We're already subject to it. We're so already subject to it. I just that wise, we were, it, it, yeah, yeah that, that, that was the only reason I didn't include okay. it. Yeah. So I don't need to add it. Um, I just wanted to make sure that in the interim period when we're uh, revising and looking, the committee's revising and looking at these rules that we were covered, but if we're covered by the law, then we don't need to um, hold it out. Okay. Um, yes, Kathy. I, I just want to offer a comment in support of what uh, Mandy has proposed to all of us. I'd gone through this separately and flagged the things I thought we really needed to operate to George's concern. And then some of what she didn't take were decisions that were made that should be our decisions to make. When are we meeting? Mm -hmm. You know, how do we choose a chair of a committee? Mm -hmm. um, so it went beyond what we need to operate. And we can make those decisions, and we should be making those decisions, but we didn't need to make them okay. tonight. 
Okay. Uh, so the motion as it now reads includes conflicts of interest. Is there any reason that we feel strongly one way or the other to withdraw that? Okay, so then let's go to the motion as we now have it. To include uh, parliamentary procedure from page one. To include conduct of meetings, preservation of order and appeals from decision of the president on page three. To include public comments, item one, amended to strike out the text, regardless of whether the matter was listed on the council agenda. And item two, to strike the language where more than 20 persons have registered for public comment. Comment time shall be limited to two minutes. Comments offered shall be a respectful manner. To include hearings on page six, and under item three of that section, add item A, add public questions, change A to B, change B to C, change C to D. Um, include debate decorum on page six. Include conflicts of interest on page seven and spectator decorum on page seven. Is there any further discussion? Call the question, all those in favor? Aye. One, two, three. I can't even count at this hour. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Nay. One abstaining. And one abstention. One nay, one abstention. All right. Um, during, so the motion is passed, and we will operate with those items that we have now. Uh, checked. Meantime, there has been discussion about the immediate, um, if you will, appointment of a committee to basically do the rules and procedures for the council. Um, I would like to uh, see if there are volunteers for that. I'd volunteer. Okay. Kathy, Councillor Dumont, Councillor Schoen, Councillor Haneke and Councilor Brewer. Are there, is there anybody else? Yes. Uh, shouldn't there be a motion by the council to create a committee? Thank you. And then, then you are, you are the ones to, you are the person that appoints people to the committee. Mm -hmm. And then the council should decide who will chair that committee. Okay. All right. Um, first of all. Or you could let the, the members consider it themselves. That's a decision Thank you. that you did, you did not address. Uh, is there a motion? I would, I, okay, let me try this. Okay. Do I hear a motion to create a committee on rules and procedure, a committee of the council on rules and procedures? I so move. I we so have a, move. And we have a first, we have a motion and a second. All right. Any further discussion about that? Yes, Steve. So this is a standing committee? No. Or, oh, so it's, an, it's a committee that has to. A one time. The, the charge I would like this committee to have is to come back to us with it in no less than two months. Um, no more, no. I want you to come back before two months is up <laughs> um, with some at least temporary rules for us, okay? And then the charter requires that we have permanent rules by six months. So wouldn't it be more appropriate to call it a task force? Because a committee suggests an ongoing um, I'm, I'm open to opinion on that. Is there a wording ad hoc committee that makes it feel temporary? I mean, Steve's trying to get it temporary. Yeah. yeah, ad hoc, okay, an ad hoc committee. So we're amending the motion to say it's a friendly amendment in this case. So we have a motion for, made and seconded. Any other further discussion? It's to create an ad hoc committee on rules and procedures. All those in favor? That's unanimous, I think. Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay, thank you. Um, and then the next thing is, uh, I am, in, as, as president of the council, I would like to know 
who would like to serve on that committee? And I see four people. So I, as president, appoint Councillor Dumont, Councillor Brewer, Councillor Schoen, and Councillor Haneke. Um, that's a good question. May I? Councillor Brewer? I believe that until we, until either the president decides on their own power that they get to appoint who the chair is, the charter doesn't say that, and that was actually one of the problems we had with these rules of procedure is that it recommended that. So I, I think we're kind of in uncharted territory at this point. And so there, there isn't a rule about who does that at this point. So you could just leave it up to the four, or if it was important to you as president, I don't think anybody can really take it from you because it's not in our rules yet. Oh, I, don't like I don't have to decide tonight. Thank you, yes. Uh, thank you, Madam President. I just want to point out that this is a committee. It is subject to the open meeting law. Yeah. Any meeting of the committee has to be posted 48 hours in advance, and I'm sure all the members, after you've gone through the training, are aware of that. And we are here to assist you to help you schedule it whenever you'd like to. Thank you very much. All right, uh, I'm going to let the committee talk among themselves, and if they would like to come back to me and ask me to appoint somebody, I'm more than glad to, okay? So I wanna be very clear about the charge, and that is we would like to see in no more than two months a set of temporary rules, and in consistent with the charter that it, we have permanent rules that are brought forth for us and with opportunity to discuss so that we can adopt them within the six month period. Okay? All right. We are now moving on to the repeal and replace existing general bylaws. Mr. Richard. The charge to the committee was, was pretty broad and in some respects pretty narrow. Uh, when we first convened, I asked myself the same question that Councillor Dumont posed. Where is that within the charge to come up with procedures? In our conversations with the town manager, uh, the idea of uh, having this group that got together uh, come up with at least a start a set of provisions that may help jumpstart uh, the council in dealing with precisely the issues that you're dealing with tonight. Uh, I'm old enough to remember uh, getting water from a pump and uh, what, we, what we approached our task was priming that pump with something that gives you something to think about. Mm -hmm. And with respect to these uh, uh, rules, uh, rules and procedures, it was intended to be precisely what it turned out to be, that is to say a checklist to shoot down, add to, it's clay for you to mold. And I think the process that unfolded tonight was precisely what we hoped it would be, that the council has a, a, a time to reflect on what it wants mm -hmm. to do in, in governing itself. Uh, so th th we did spend a good deal of time on these procedures and largely by virtue of the fact that although I lived in an ivory tower, uh, Mr. Uh, Kubiak did not. He lived in the real world of, of local government and uh, so we did craft language that we thought would be helpful to you. But we did spend most of our time on taking the bylaws of the town as we found them, looked at them critically, and uh, read what we were supposed to do with them, and basically allow them to be morphed into our new form of government. What must we do to take them and make them work, given our new uh, 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 charter and the new way we do things? So. Uh, our goal was not to do, uh, in, at least initially, anything that, uh, other than what was absolutely mandated by necessity and by the, by the chart of itself. You know, references to select board had to be removed uh, and replaced with uh, either the council or the manager or the licensing commission. We had choices of that sort. Some of those choices were easy and some of them were difficult. The difficult ones, we identify what we thought was the case, and in comments to the draft that we gave you, uh, offered some suggestions that you might want to think about as you deliberate. 
Uh, we're giving you a, a, a text to play with. It's in tracked changes uh, format, and it's, it was meant to be uh, clay for you to model. So some things we knew uh, had to come out. For example, uh, things having to do with uh, town meeting procedures, uh, that, that clearly had to go. Other things were, were comprehensively dealt with by the charter, such as the, uh, the budget uh, considerations. So best left in the charter rather than replicating them to our peril in, in, in the bylaws. Um, and and th so the next thing we did is to look at uh, the framework of the existing uh, bylaws, both general and zoning, and, and say, are they adequate? Well, with regard to the framework, the zoning bylaws were actually adequate. They, they were well, well the, the structure of them, the framework of them was well done. It has a consistent alphanumeric way of identifying its ingredients. Uh, on the other hand, the general bylaws were not. Uh, they were uh, collections of actions by town meetings that go back into the twilight of the town's history. And they were not organized in accordance with any particular framework. Much of it was left to the discretion and the wisdom of the town clerk. And over the years, uh, bylaws were collected, uh, each drafted in somewhat different ways, not necessarily consistent with each other. <coughs> And they were added sequentially, uh, and there was no pattern or organization to them. So given the opportunity, in fact, the duty to map and migrate the old laws into our new structure, uh, the committee thought about uh, a new framework, uh, a, a new alpha alphamineric framework, which, which, which would basically uh, uh, allow us to take what was in the existing code of general laws and moving them over whole and entire, just lift them up and drop them into the new place. Uh, My finger is actually getting numb from pressing on this button. <laughs> is there any way to keep that on? No. Okay, I have my thumb on it now. Uh, so the, the, the opportunity uh, presented itself to take these uh, laws and uh, say what else needs to be done with them and so in our report, and I think I don't want to belabor you uh, with reading it, but you see it, uh, we, we thought we would take the opportunity of making consistent references to things. Uh, if a uh, town manager was capitalized in one place and not in another, let's pick some one thing and have it be consistent. So throughout the entire code, things that were referring to the same thing were said in the same way. The next thing we said, uh, let's take the he, she out of it and make things gender neutral. Uh, so you see that uh, gender neutrality was introduced in the migration from the existing code over to the new one. We took great care to uh, retain substantive equivalence. That is to say, the goal was not to change what the law was, but to move it in such a way that, uh, that it, it moved into its new home uh, with some of these adjustments to the way things were said, not what they meant, but how they were expressed. Uh, for example, uh, there are no Romans living in Amherst, so we deleted Roman numerals and used numerals throughout, that kind of thing. Uh, we have a consistent method of capitalizing uh, public uh, uh, officials and boards. Um, uh, and, and that was another level at which we altered the text of, of the source. Uh, and, it, and it appeared in the new framework with those changes reflected. The next thing we noticed is that uh, the bylaws inconsistently got into the matter of uh, fines and fees and penalties in quite different ways among the various bylaws. So we thought it might serve utility and efficiency and transparency and clarity for everyone uh, to take all of that stuff and pull it out of the dense text of the bylaw itself and relocate it to the beginning of the bylaw so that anybody that uh, looks through the bylaw uh, uh, will always see at the beginning of every bylaw uh, any fees, penalties, uh, penalties of fines associated with uh, the fees or the other uh, violations. Um, the uh, the next thing we noticed is that uh, we do live in the 21st century and the capability of generating uh, web-based documents with uh, hyperlinks gave us an opportunity to take a, uh, a, a, a list of 
in the table of contents uh, and, and cast it additionally in, into a, a, a table of contents that's indexed uh, to the bylaw itself. So in the draft, you will see not only a table of contents that conform to the new framework, but you will see a second table of contents with the same stuff, but, but organized in an alphabetic array. Uh, and adjacent to it, you will see the, uh, the bylaw to which it relates and a hyperlink to it so that anyone accessing this document uh, online will quickly be able to find the topic they want and jump to the bylaw in question. Mm -hmm. um, in some, in some uh, cases, we took long phrases that found it themselves repeated endlessly. And we said, it's unnecessary to repeat those phrases. Uh, it, let's introduce them once and then say what we mean by a word that represents them. So these are, the, these are the kinds of changes that we made. Um, and uh, our goal in all instances was to preserve as much uh, consistency with the way it is now and only making those changes that were absolutely necessitated. Some changes was necessitated by the virtue of the fact that the state statutes uh, had changed and we rendered them conforming to the statutory changes. Um, so we, we took this approach and we read through the bylaw many, many times, iteratively, and each time we read a bylaw, we asked ourselves the question, is this fundamentally okay? Is this fundamentally questionable? Or is it just something that we need to think more about? And in many cases, we found there was nothing wrong with the bylaw as written, and so we shaded that bylaw blue. And that meant that this is, this is teed up to be moved over whole and entire the way it was drafted. There were other sections of the bylaw that we were highly suspicious of and, and thought that we don't want to endorse the inclusion of that and migrate it to the new framework without having a good hard look by town attorney. So we have, we, we, we coded it orange. So we have a version of the bylaws that have color coded on all provisions. I think code uh, section four, draft four has this. And, uh, and so the town attorney will advise us on many of these bylaws that we had questions about. Um, when we were through this process and every section had, was either blue or orange, uh, we decided that some things were so certain that we just made them green and uh, set, set those aside because we didn't think there'd be any question about them. So we tried to preserve, uh, have an audit trail of the things that we did so that anybody that had a question about how did it go from point A to point Z can go back and see the steps that we took when we made these changes. And that's, that is uh, in, our, in our archive. We have all that information. Um, lastly, I may say this, and I think uh, Councilor Brewer has made me sensitive to this, and I think also Councilor Steinberg as well. Uh, the timetable, and uh, Councilor Ryan uh, pointed this out earlier, give us time. Uh, we optimistically felt that there would be no harm done uh, making these changes uh, wholesale substitution right away at the get-go. I now see that that was sort of a, 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 a aspirational uh, inclusion of our, our recommendation. Mm -hmm. it, it just shouldn't be done that fast. Uh, there is some need to address this sooner rather than later. Uh, it is also desirable not to be doing it piecemeal. Uh, it would be a preference to, as we suggested, bring it over and do a wholesale replacement, repeal and, 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 uh, and adopt, on the theory that you will have 61 days to think about what you just did and either change it back to its original form or, or, or leave it or modify it. Um, the alternative is not to do that, but to uh, wait until you had something that is uh, shaped up to be ready to do a wholesale migration. That would be good too. What wouldn't be good is if you had mixed and matches, if you had some bylaws that are the law of the town by virtue of the charter provision that says that until they are repealed or replaced, they remain the law of the town. So we don't want to have a code that has some laws that were enacted by prior legislators, legislatures, and some that are adopted by you, yourselves as the current legislators. That would be, we're always asking the question, when was this law adopted? Mm -hmm. I would like to have a firm level set 
on the date that you adopt the bylaws of the town, and that is the date the bylaws go into effect. They are a seamless migration of what was there before, so there's no substantive change. But we do resolve the zone of ambiguity by having laws that have different start dates from different legislatures in the town's history. Uh, so uh, I, I think that uh, the feedback that I've got from the, uh, the councilors I've spoken with uh, suggests that we should retreat from the immediate uh, re repeal and adopt uh, to something that is more humane and more consistent with the need for time that Councillor Ryan points out that we need. So in a nutshell, uh, that's uh, what brought us to the point that we gave you the report. Okay. Um, I just would like to ask some qu a question or two, and there might be other councillors that would like to ask a question, but let me preface that by saying your committee has done amazing work. This is just an outstanding uh, task that you've taken on, and uh, I know that the select board uh, that has now gone out of business, if you will, uh, asked you to do this as they were tasked to do in, by the charter, and we want to thank you for that amazing work that you've done uh, to get us to this point. Is there anything in these bylaws at this point that need to happen because it prevents the town from doing its regular business? I think the thing that most immediately needs to be done is what the committee first did. That is to say, read it with one goal in mind, and that's not to address what is being said, but who does it. And uh, the, the, uh, the careful attention to substitution of, from select board to X, is that X the town manager, is it the council, is it the uh, licensing commission, is it something else? That would be the first cut, and I think that should be done uh, quickly. Okay. Now, if you didn't do that, uh, the, the dam doesn't break, the world doesn't come to an end. Mm -hmm. uh, when instances uh, arise that need some interpretation, uh, and the town attorney will, will advise you, uh, if, a, if a, a task was assigned to the select board and continues to be in the bylaws assigned mm -hmm. to the select board, uh, it will be assigned to someone else. Uh, but it, it, it would not be clear, it would be a decision that would have to be based upon the, the best judgment of the town manager and the town attorney. Uh, it would be best to clarify that right away. So I would say that as a candidate for the immediate changes, that would be the one I would suggest uh, first. Andy. Yeah, just to follow up on that, I guess my question is, is there any risk in what you just described of somebody litigating against the town because of lack of clarity of the responsibility and contesting whether the person who is temporarily assigned because we did not act tonight um, did so? Well, of course you have Joel here to answer that question for you. I don't think so. I mean, in my prior life, uh, when I looked at recodifications of towns, uh, wholesale replacements of the old codes with new codes was, was almost a daily event on my desk. And uh, this happens uh, in, in places uh, where a town has chosen to recodify its laws. And the question arises, how do you do that? Uh, I've seen it done more often than not as a wholesale replacement. Uh, if it were to be a, 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 uh, a refined section by section, word by word, it would be so complicated that you would, it would become error prone by, by the magnitude of the task of making surgical replacements of parts. Uh, it's like putting a new engine in a car. You want a new engine or an old engine, but you don't want a new engine with old parts. So it, it, it may not answer your question, and I do not believe given the language of the charter, uh, that anyone that was previously assigned uh, a task that doesn't exist, uh, the, is it a legislative uh, uh, assignment? Is, is it an executive uh, assignment? Frankly, that's gonna take care of almost all cases. 
if something was previously assigned as the responsibility of the select board, it would now fall to the town manager in his capacity as the chief executive officer. Uh, if it was a legislative function, well, that would go to the council. But in some instances, uh, it falls in a gray area. Mm -hmm. And those are the things that really need to be thought about. You ask, is there any liability? Um, probably not, and if there is, it's relatively low, but I, I would depend upon the uh, opinion of council on that one. Do you have an opinion on that? Uh, Madam President, yes, and actually, uh, Attorney Ritchie, I think, addressed it in, in the latter part of his comments. Right. So in other words, I do agree that the risk of liability is low. I also agree that in most instances, we're essentially going to be asked to put the round peg in the round hole, let's call that executive, right. and the square peg in the square hole, let's call that legislative. It right. essentially would be a judgment call, and and I do think the frequency of those kinds of questions will be low, and so uh, I, I do think that there's uh, essentially, uh, Councillor Steinberg's question is, what's the risk of delaying? And I would say it's fairly low. Okay. Are there other, right now, all we're doing is having a discussion. There's no motion on the floor or anything else. Other con questions, comments? Can yes, Councillor Schoen. I, I think what I'm hearing is that we've removed the notion that this is an emergency and we have to do something right this minute, um, which, which I really like, because I, I think it behooves us all to read through what you've done. I got through draft four and then was moving my way up to draft six and went back to some what I thought were minor wording changes, and I checked on a legal thing that must and shall actually mean something different and the recommendation is never remove must, if you had must, and we've removed, we've exchanged it for shall in, in an early draft, and it's been a change in legal opinions at Supreme Court and a few other more recent than saying they're equivalent. So I just think we need a close read, and I think what we've just been offered is buy some time, because the charter's pretty clear on where it's legislative or executive, so we're not in an emergency, and then we can go back and really say how much of this is just fine mm -hmm. and where we have questions. I yeah. think that was what your suggestion was. You know, whether I'm not talking about time for the next 20 years, but a short period of time, yeah. Is there other comments, discussions, questions? Yes, uh, Councillor uh, Ryan. Is this something then that we're going to do individually as an entity, 13 people reading this, uh, or is this something that we're going to submit again, as we've done earlier, to a subcommittee or some kind of committee? Who does this, this intensive and a very laborious labor? Um, I just wonder who. Is that, or is that appropriate at this point? But I'm just curious who's going to. Is this everybody? Kathy's obviously been hard at work already. Um, are we all expected, and I have no problem with this if that's the consensus, but mm -hmm. is this something we're going to do as a group, or is it something we're going to assign to some committee to do and then report back to us? I'm looking at the clerk because she has something to say. On page 35 of the charter, item V, um, it does state that upon assumption of the office of the town council shall be responsible for the continuation of the review of town bylaws and shall appoint a committee to review the town bylaws for the purpose of preparing such revisions and amendments as may be necessary to bring them into conformity with the provisions of the charter. So the question I have is, is that a committee of the council or is that a committee that we appoint such as the committee we've had? I, I, I believe the two operative provisions are section 10, 7, U and V. Such, subsection U of 10, 7 yes. is how we came into existence. Right. We could theoretically be twilighted this evening by the council's appointment of a successor board. Uh, but if you do that, yeah. that you would be operating under, under subsection U, which yes. is the continuation of the process that we've started. Okay. Is it appropriate for us to have a motion to ask you to continue your work? Is that Yes. Okay. And then the, yes. I'm just wondering if we would like to 
to um, extend the committee and add a couple of counselors on that committee who might be interested in doing that, working with the bylaw review committee that currently exists. Okay, that's certainly an option. Um, let me first, let's have a motion first. Yes, did you, okay. Well, let's have a uh, motion to um, gratefully request, yes. Go. We could use the wording here that I move to appoint a committee to review the town bylaws for the purpose of preparing such revisions. That I mean, we could just read that section, but it says once you do that, then the one that the select board previously was is over. But that it, it totally makes it clear that we can still beg them to stay and, <laughs> as part of that new committee, and then we can add people to it. Okay. It's just that it ends the previous part, and then it gives them a year. Hmm. And I might point out, without change in compensation. <laughs> this, this has to be a labor of love. <laughs> so perhaps the motion could be to appoint a committee in accordance with, and then just reference 10.7 okay. V. So I hear a motion from Council Brewer to appoint a committee. In accordance with section 10.7 okay. B. Is there a second? Um, I second that if that includes the idea that some members of the council be added to the committee. Yes. Yes. Um, do you, that was a second? Yes. Okay. Councillor Haneke. Uh, I, I was going to actually address what Councillor Pam did. Um, should our motion include a size of the committee? How many members would be on it? Um, <laughs> and is it a committee of the council such that it's the president appointing the committee? Or it, is this what our, shouldn't our motion sort of indicate who the appointing authority is to, along with a size? I believe when the select board appointed under 107U, your charge indicated a size and who would do the appointment. If I could follow up, you says the select board shall, so we had to do it. Mm -hmm. And so we were the appointing authority and we even had to replace a member who moved out of town. It is interesting given that we have said throughout the discussion tonight that the president is responsible for appointments it says here, upon assumption of the office, the town council shall be responsible for the continuation of the review of town bylaws and shall appoint a committee. So eh, it's a little loose, I think. <laughs> but I would be totally amenable too. If everybody wants, it, we can say either that's just the first part of the motion and then there's a second motion that's the number and the extra people or however somebody wants to combine it is fine with me, particularly since we have a clerk who's perfectly willing to read things back to us in numerous iterations. And now we understand why we have a clerk. Um, thank heavens. Um, okay, we have a motion that's been made and seconded uh, to have a bylaw review committee of the council. Uh, and the only other question on the floor then is adding to that committee actual council members and the question then is how many and so forth. Yes, Mr. Bockelman. Thank you, Madam President. So perhaps a task you, maybe, maybe you're already to, to do this, but maybe the thing would be to bring back the charge and put that in your packet for your next time and make some changes, make some recommended changes to it. Uh, the other thing the council should do is consult with the existing bylaw review committee. There's one member who's not here just make sure they want to continue serving. They may not, they may feel that their term is finished, their work is finished, or may not want to work in this new configuration, whatever, you know, whatever it is. So, um, but maybe if you establish the committee and then we can, we, we, with that instruction, we can bring back a charge that you can then adapt, you know, based on the, the okay. um, select board's charge. So we're going to establish, the, the motions on the floor to establish the committee. The, um, at this point, we're not defining size, 
Yes. Um, that we would come back with a charge, having also checked with the existing members of the bylaw review group. Yeah. Oh, so I just want to point out that um, we should be clear on whether the establishment of the pit committee um, terminates the current bylaw review committee or whether it's the actual appointment of new members. The charter itself says, upon the appointment of such committee, the committee established shall be terminated. Now, in, I don't know how you want to interpret it, so I, I think I'd wonder what town attorney would say whether that means it's upon establishment of a new one or upon the actual appointment of new committee members, because that might affect how we decide whether to vote, vote tonight or not. Right. Or not. Right. Madam President, I, I think the word appointment speaks for itself. So I think when you appoint the members, then when you appoint the members to the new committee, then the old committee disappears, is disbanded. So in other words, you could establish, I think we go with just the normal understanding and meaning of the words. So I think establishing the committee tonight. And then appoint. Would, and the then future. appoint later. And the yes. appointment would be the point at which um, these fellows here put on new hats. I right. Guess. OK, so the motion on the floor is to establish a bylaw review committee of the council. And we will come. And that, that motion was made and seconded. And the, we will then come back in a future meeting to actually appoint that committee, at which point we hope we get to see some of you again. <laughs> um, is there any further discussion about the establishment of the Bylaw Review Committee? Seeing none, let's have a vote. All those in favor? Opposed? It's unanimous. Whew. And that was just the general bylaws. Um, zoning we are not even dealing with tonight. OK. Uh, under our items of discussion is a memo that came from the select board on multiple member bodies. Uh, it is a significant document. Uh, it seems to me that it's something we should defer discussion to another time. Uh, and what we need to deal with now is our next meeting date and time. And I want to point out that we already do have, or there will be posted, a meeting on Saturday, December 8th at 9 o'clock at the Amherst Regional Middle School. It is the official meeting of the four towns. It is my understanding that that group meets twice a year, and in the pa and uh, we will post the meeting so that if there are seven or more of us there, we can legitimately have a meet be there as a meeting. Um, so that is one date, which is the December eighth, Saturday, December eighth, at the regional middle school at. 9 o'clock in the morning. My understanding is the meeting takes place for much of the morning. I, I think it's in the middle school. Middle school. Middle school, yeah. yeah. Councillor Brewer. Thank you, Madam President. I wanted to ask about the fact that because of the transitions that have been taking place, and obviously the other three communities have a school committee a finance committee and a select board, and we don't have that anymore. And so given that Mr. Steinberg has frequently spoken on our behalf, I wonder if we could just be clear as a body that whoever happens to be able to go that morning, that if Amherst is put on the spot in a question that feels that Mr. Bachelman might feel he wanted to toss to an elected official, that that would be Mr. Steinberg's role at that meeting. Even though, of course, you are the president, I didn't know if you were attending, but given his history with the assessment questions. I do plan to attend, but I plan to ask Councilor Steinberg to speak on our behalf. Uh, he is very well aware of the nuances of the four town meetings and has represented us quite well in the past. Is 
I'll, I'll make it as a motion or I'll second your motion that Mr. Steinberg represent us. So the motion's been made and I've seconded. Is there any further discussion? That doesn't mean you aren't going to be there. It doesn't mean that you can't funnel questions through Councillor Steinberg. It just means that we're going to take advantage of the expertise already vested in one of our council members. Okay. Councilor For your Steinberg. vote, uh, I appreciate the confidence that's uh, been shown. I want to emphasize that this meeting will have actually several parts to it, and the uh, major pieces really will be the uh, superintendent will uh, give a review of the operations of the regional schools during the past year and projections for the year ahead and goals for the year ahead and then translate that into budget goals. Those kinds of issues um, are different and may be um, things that if um, others on the council have uh, legitimate questions we want to make sure get uh, presented. And so I wanted to sort of alert you to that is different from if questions come up about a town other than us pr proposing something having to do with the assessment methodology, which is how the money is divided amongst the four towns, which involves a lot of complex legal um, and political layers to it. Those are the trick, that's the trickier part, and that may or may not happen. We don't know because it would take another town to raise that issue. It has happened at these meetings. Um, it doesn't always happen at these meetings. Uh, so if a counselor uh, has a question, uh, how would you advise that we handle that? Uh, to the extent that we're all sitting together, somebody may be whispering to me anyway, saying that they're interested in coming to say, go ask it. Uh, you know, if it's uh, about a proposal, and I can't tell you what it would be for sure, but if it's about some kind of change in the educational program, uh, you know, I think that uh, that's not the same as uh, the kind of political legal issues that I was referring to in the other part. So I'm a little bit less concerned about um, if somebody's away from me and they ask a question, they ask a question. Um, it would be good if we could try and sit as much together and avoid that if we can. Okay. All right. Other discussion or questions about the this and the motion? We have a motion before us that uh, Councillor Steinberg represent, speak on our behalf, excuse me, I believe that's the right words, uh, at the Four Towns meeting on December 8th at 9 o'clock, the middle school. Any further conversation? If not, all those in favor? Opposed? It's unanimous. Um, we now need to move on to setting our next meeting date. Uh, there has been discussion, and in fact, I understand that uh, Councillor Pam has done a little calendar review, and uh, she actually, I think, was recommending. Well, it, it turns out six of one and half a dozen of the other. Um, uh -huh. If you do first and third, um, there's two conflicts of Mondays, uh, Labor Day and um, Martin Luther Eric King. Kippur. If you do second and fourth, you have three conflicts, Memorial Day, Columbus Day, and Veterans Day. So, uh, oh, excuse me, Indigenous Peoples Day, um, the town of Amherst. Oh, sorry. Okay. The question before us is whether or not we yeah. go with the first and third Monday of the month or the second and fourth. Right. So let's have a motion that it be the first and third. I'll second that. Now let's have a discussion. Okay. Yes. I uh, support the. Um, oh, thank you. Yep. Sorry. Um, I support doing the first and the third 
Okay. Um, but I also feel like I would like to see us meet next um, Monday, the 10th. I think it's the 10th. Um, I feel like we have so much to do to begin this, and I know my esteemed colleague can't be here until 8, but I feel like we should start at the regular time at 6.30 mm -hmm. and have her join us, and we can certainly support her by filling her in on anything that has transpired. But I think there's just so much to do to get started. I'd like to see us meet on the 10th and the 17th. Okay. Is there, so right now it's the first and the third. There's discussion about also including, at least for this month, the 10th. Uh, Councillor Haneke. Are we discussing just dates or dates and times? Did let's the motion include dates. the first and third? Okay. And let's, let's stick with dates. And the motion is about our regular meeting on being on the first and third Mondays. Yes. I, I just have a question. Um, having looked at a few other towns, I'm not sure what Select Board does, but does that continue through July and August? And I'm planning on just marking my calendar. So we're going to do first and third all summer also? I think we put it on our calendar and we cancel if we feel okay. we don't need it or we feel we want to take a break. Okay, that's what I understand. The charter Thanks. requires that we meet once a month. I think we all realize that we have a lot of work ahead of us. Yep. No, that's what I just was marking okay. out. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, okay, so the motion right now is for a regular meeting time being the first and third Mondays of the month unless it falls on a holiday at which point we will schedule an alternative date. That was a friendly amendment, yes, Stephen. But, but always on Monday. Always on Monday. Yeah, so, the, so it might be the following Monday, yeah. whatever, okay? Uh, unless obviously there's an emergency or something that we just can't wait. All right, the motion's been made and seconded for the regular meeting date, if you will of the first and third Monday of the month. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous? Okay, now let's talk about meeting. I'm yeah. sorry, I'm sorry. You I, I have a reason for abstaining, but I'll abstain. Oh, okay. You sure? Yep. Okay. Um, would you like to talk about it? No, I just, um, I don't really want to have this affect the decision at this late an hour. Um, I, I have a personal conflict with a, a date that comes up as a result, but that could happen to any of us, and I don't think it's fair that um, one individual member should affect the outcome, so that's why I abstained. It was just the easiest course. Thank you. Uh, time. We'll get back to the issue okay. of the tenth in a moment. Time of evening, certainly before 8 o'clock. No. I'm open to suggestions, um, motions. Okay. Um, I'd, I'd like to suggest 7 o'clock as opposed to 6.30. Okay. Stephen? I think we have big agendas, and it takes us a while to get warmed up, and we have to, I think somewhere there was a principle that we should be done by 10. Because I, I don't think it's humane to go past 10, actually. I mean, it's not fair to, mm -hmm. to counselors or to the public. So I, I'd rather at least at the beginning have as big a chunk of time mm -hmm. as possible. So are you suggesting 7 or are you suggesting 6.30? 6 Other conversation about time, Mandy Jo? So I kind of like Dorothy, Councillor Pam's. <laughs> um, uh, Suggestion of seven. I, I recognize we have a lot of work to do, and seven might seem a little late. Three hours is still a long meeting. If we go to ten, three and a half is even longer. Um, seven is a little more humane for people who want to eat dinner with their families, I feel like, than 6.30, where to get here and be ready to start at 6.30 or 6 or 5.30, you know, if we move earlier means it's really hard to convene with your families in the evening. Um, and a seven o'clock is a little more um, helpful to that, that, that sort of thing happening. Mm -hmm. yeah, it was about childcare that I was thinking, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. 
Um, okay, let's have, a, yes, Alyssa. The, the thought I just wanted to add to that is, so I've been associated with meetings that start at 6.15, 6.30, 7 o'clock, 7.30, 7.30 is way too late. Um, appreciating that we changed town meeting from 7.30 back to 7, that caused some people problems, made other people happier. And so there is no perfect time. Right. I think we can all agree. And um, giving up family time is what you all signed up for. <laughs> but I would really love it if people would occasionally get to have meals with their family. So the caveat I would give is I know we don't yet have rules on when public comment would be, but if you hadn't already heard this from me, I'm adamant that public comment be at the end of meetings, not at the beginning. If we start a seven o'clock meeting with public comment, we are starting off really at a difficult thing when we may not even get to start our business until 7.30 at that point. So if we're gonna go to seven, I hope that even more so supports the idea of doing public comment at the end of the meeting, which is hopefully well before 10 o'clock, Mr. Shriver agreed. Okay, so it seems to me we need a mo yes, I'm sorry, George. We're, we're setting the start time, but we're not saying anything about an end time. You is that, <laughs> we cannot do that, or we, sh we shouldn't can. even think about it at this time? Maybe we, we should just leave it for another day? Maybe we want to have a goal but, of ending I mean, by 10? People say 10 o'clock, but is that just like a wish, or can we simply say meeting starts at 7, ends at 10, end of story? Maybe that's just not possible. But. Councilor Ross. The, the draft rules that were provided, although not one of the sections we recommended, did have something in there that said meetings of the council and shall not extend past 10 p.m. unless the council otherwise determines. So it's something that we could work into future rules um, to make it clear that past 10 would be only under uh, perhaps extraordinary circumstances. The agreement of the council. Councilor Steinberg. Oh, that Councilor was Steinberg. essentially my point that it could, this could be referred to the committee we previously established. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. All right, do I hear a motion that we meet at seven o'clock with a goal of going no later than 10? <laughs> motion made. made motion and motion seconded. seconded. So moved, yes. Any further discussion? All of those in favor? We have a unanimous vote on that one. Um, we are now to the point of our second round of public comment. Was that, yes? I, I believe, I think it was Councillor Dumont, or was it, it oh, was I'm Councillor DeAngelis about Councilor potentially De meeting the has 10th. has asked whether we could meet on, uh, thank you, on the 10th. And that would be at, at seven. seven, and going no later than 10. Um, is there further discussion about that? Um, I would say we have a lot to do and it makes sense. Okay. Yes, Councillor Dumont. Uh, I also think it makes a lot of sense, especially since we'll only have two meetings in December that I know of. Mm -hmm. Are we going to meet at all? I know the other two Mondays are holidays right. at the end of the month, so uh, it seems like it would be a good idea. To meet the tenth and the seventeenth. Yes, Councillor Brewer. I'm simply going to ask, and I know this may seem a bit premature, but um, what are we going to do on the tenth and the seventeenth? Very good question. And so, while I think we can all appreciate that we have a ton of work to do, what's something that can be prepared for us to act on right. on the tenth, given that you know it's right. not quite the fourth of December yet, but we're getting close. Um, right. And so, because that puts pressure, you know, on staff and on our president, like if there's a specific thing we know we want to work on next week, terrific. Otherwise, I'm wondering if we want to wait until the 17th, because there will have been time to get more things prepared for us. I think that there's uh, some serious merit to that comment. Mm -hmm. Yes, Councillor Meet. There are a couple more committees that the charter says we have to appoint within six months. We could maybe start that process next week, including the Ranked Choice Voting Committee um, is one that I know there are a number of residents in this town that would really like to see that move ahead quickly. Um, there's also, 
it's budget season, and the charter talks about a finance committee, so maybe we could talk about potentially committees of the council that the council might want to create and then potentially adopt some of those or for this the meeting afterward. That that's a potential for a, a potential um, agenda item. So the proposal is that the agenda item is to discuss the committees that the of the council and the committees that we appoint. Is that your proposal? Uh, and that would take place on the tenth. And, and we have one we just created now where we gave a charge to do bylaws. We didn't say how many people, so we could just quickly do something that had the charge, how many people, so we could okay. yeah. start that. It wouldn't okay. have to do more in a long discussion on it. Yes. Yeah, and we did postpone the discussion of the uh, select board memorandum on committees. Yes, we did. All right. Um, so the motion or the plan then would be to also meet on the 10th at 7 o'clock, no later than uh, 10, and that our primary conversation will be around committees, building off of both the charter and off of the memorandum that was provided to us by the select board with all the other committees. Yes? Okay. Any other conversation? Yes. I know this is a lot of work for staff. Um, I'm wondering when we could expect to get our agendas for those meetings. Since we don't have any, you know, we haven't set times for when that's going to happen. Mandra Bachman. So, so uh, the president sets the agenda for the for the council meeting in consultation with the manager. Right. So we would meet at I would I mean I'm here all the time. We would meet at her convenience. I know that the president is traveling this week, so we would may do it you know by telephone or something like that. Um, but we can set the agenda and try to prepare as much information as we can in the next couple of days. Information typically for a Monday meeting gets would go out on Friday, so you would get it for the weekend. I'm actually back in town Wednesday afternoon. <laughs> I just, I, it's just one of those odd, weird weeks for me, yes. Councilor if, if I could quickly follow up on that, one of the advantages to the items that have been chosen for the 10th is we actually have most of them. Right. The inside the select board uh, memo packet is the actual bylaw review committee's charge. Mm -hmm. And since it really is just verbatim out of the charter from a different section, it's not going to be that difficult to put together. Rank choice voting and finance committee, finance committee in particular could be somewhat more challenging in terms of really thinking about best practices for that. I will say, <clears throat> despite my great respect for staff, that it is absolutely unacceptable that we receive materials on Friday for a Monday meeting. Mm -hmm. That is far too short of a time period with the expectation that everyone has time in their weekend to do everything mm -hmm. as opposed to being able to spread it out over the course of a week. I realize we're starting fresh right. and hopefully more things can get pushed to us electronically, but the Friday-Monday thing is really, really intolerable for a lot of people's schedules. And I would hope that we would work toward it being, in this particular case, we really actually have most of the stuff because we have the charter, we have the charge. But for future reference, mm -hmm. as I refer to it, the last minute needs to be a sooner last minute than Friday. But will you allow for the Friday this time? Of course. Thank you. <laughs> um, um, but knowing that we, in fact, have the major documents you're to look at is the memo from the select board and the charter. So we will form yeah. an agenda. That will be our topic of discussion unless another item comes up as necessary. Manager Bachman. Thank you, Madam President. So the expectation, especially since we don't have to produce paper, which is right. what we had to do with the select board, mm -hmm. is that we will transmit it to you electronically and post it online, so you will all get it at the exact same time. And that will that does help, and it takes a major step of production out of our system. And I have to say that there was a test on email today, and at least mine came through. I hope all of you have checked yours, because, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. 
check, make sure you're, there was a yeah. test done on email, our town email today. Mm. What grade so, did you get? I got an A. <laughs> I had, I, Lynn? Yes. I just wanna, I wanna ask Council a question. Pam. This is for um, town manager Bachelman. Okay, I have to admit, I am used to an academic calendar. Um, December 17th is really getting into no man's land and we just don't, business doesn't go on at that point. I wanted to know in terms of town hall, um, is there gonna be a hardship for the workers for us to have a meeting on the, se on the 17th? Um, our staff will work at your convenience. Whatever the ch council chooses to do, we will meet your needs. Thank you for that considerate comment. Any other business? Do we still have public comment? Yes. How many people would like to comment? One, two. Could you please identify yourselves and make your comment no more than three minutes if possible? And I will ask our council, will just be very willing to listen and we're glad to have you here this evening. <laughs> okay, I just was alarmed when I heard that public comment would be only at the end of meetings, and especially when I'm seeing this end of meeting. <laughs> um, I can also see that if you have a if you have a um, deadline of 10 o'clock, that you're going to bump up against it and squeeze public comment. And I think one of the big charges for the for the um, council is to hear from the public. So I really consider that, you know, you may want to have people say, okay, you can get the first five, you know, the first five in or something. But um, I know as a, as a public, I would much prefer to address, if I had something really important, I'd much prefer to address the, the council before they've deliberated. And so they can decide whether they're gonna care about it or not. Thank you. Pearson and District. could you please identify yourself? I'm Barbara Pearson from District 3. Thank you. There was another person with public comment. You have to press that black okay. button. Okay, all right. Yeah, it's Krista Osterling Rising. And I wanted to address the vote for vice president, which was obviously a contentious vote. It took five votes to finally get it done. Um, and I also want to um, discuss the, um, the talk about improved representation on the charter. Once the charter was, that, that, that was one of the ways in which the charter was advocated by, well, people like Mandy, for example, that it would have better representation. Um, and, um, the talk after the election about healing divisions and unity. Obviously, there was great unity in the vote for president, and that was nice. I liked seeing that. Um, but the vice president vote was a difficult vote. Um, and the elephant in the room was that question of healing divisions and unity. And um, Councillor Darcy Dumont uh, expressed it pretty well when she said that the important goal was to heal the town, that that was an important goal of this council. And how the council chose its leadership today was gonna be an important factor in that. And if you had a president from one camp and a vice president from the other camp, then that would uh, go a long way to heal some of that division that had been the case before and still after the election. And I just wanted to express my personal disappointment because six people voted for one candidate. And it wasn't based on qualifications because both the candidates for vice president were very qualified. Six voted for the other. Uh, the problem is that the real choice wasn't which candidate was more qualified. The real choice was, are we gonna have 
representation from the two different camps, you know, prior to the election and after the election? Are we going to really prioritize healing the divisions, or are we going to prioritize having our favored candidate? And what ended up happening finally was that the favored candidate was prioritized over healing the divisions. And I personally, as a resident and a voter in town, felt that the healing the divisions should have been a higher priority. It should have been more important to have a representative, a, a, vice, a vice president from one camp and a president from the other camp than to have um, your favorite candidate. Because both candidates are and were were very qualified. And I was very disappointed that that was the priority for seven people, that it was more important to have your favorite candidate than it was to heal those divisions and really address the issue of unity and um, bringing the child back together. So much talk had been put into that. And when it came right down to it in this vote, it fell away. It wasn't important. It was more important for people to get their favorite candidate. And frankly, it's upsetting to me, and it makes me angry, because it says that all this talk about better representation with, uh, with the charter, better representation with the town council, really doesn't matter. And it's about politics, it's about having your favorite candidate, and it's not really about caring about the voters of Amherst, which is what you all talked about so much before the vote. I think six people were really committed to doing that, and one person really tried to abstain to stay out of it, and I admire that too. But in the end, the choice was made to choose the favored candidate rather than to choose healing the divisions in Amherst, and I think that should have been the priority tonight. This is the first meeting. It was the first test of whether you can really overcome these divisions in Amherst, and frankly, you failed. So sorry, I know that's a nasty way to end the meeting, but I've been sitting through this entire meeting very upset about it, and I wanna let you guys know that. I know that some people made a, a genuine effort, and uh, one person was Alyssa Brewer. I think that she really tried to... to we ask that you not get into personal Right, so, but I think that she really tried to heal those divisions, and I like that. I admire it. I only said it because it was a positive thing, but yeah, usually I wouldn't use names. So, but I... I'm upset about the decision that was made because I think it was against that goal that was stated about healing divisions and creating unity. So that's how I feel, and I think that quite a few other people are gonna feel the same way. That's all I have to say. Thank you for your comment. Is there any other comment? Do I hear a motion to adjourn? Second.